गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स एम आई ऑडिबल जीवन भोसले आई वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर दिस वंडरफुल सेशन ऑन एच आर लीगल ऑर्गनाइज बाय भारतीय विमा कर्मचारी सेना एंड मुंबई इंश्योरेंस इंस्टीट्यूट आई वॉन्ट टू टेक अपॉर्चुनिटी टू से थैंक्स टू आवर प्लेयर लीडर श्री दिनेश भाऊ बोबाटे and uh, all committee members of mumbai insurance institute or uh, i also uh, thanks to my colleagues mr anil jadhav mr prasad sakarkar mr rishikesh kulkarni mr sagar deshmukh and mr sandeep lanke our today's faculty uh, is well known and uh, very famous uh, faculty and um, uh, he has vast experience of uh, more than 40 years in field of vigilance Mr. Hanif Sheikh, sir, has worked as uh, a vigilance officer at Pune Aro uh, and HO. Sir has uh, helped many uh, many employees in uh, their vigilance cases, and uh, sir is uh, uh, the person behind many changes in vigilance rules. Now, taking further uh, time, I uh, request sir to uh, take over and start the lecture. हाँ हाँ गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स uh can you hear good me good morning sir yeah audible uh, yeah thank you vidula you are joining so before i start my session on cda rules or hr legal i would just like to request you that whenever you feel any sort of a clarification is required from my side you can definitely ask uh, during the course of the session also and at the end of the session also because we have got lot of time to uh, study this particular subject so now we come to the new directions of the limited conduct discipline and appeal rule 2014 which was earlier known as general insurance cda rules 1975 yeah i don't know whether all the faculty all the uh, participants are from new india insurance or from some other insurance companies also but even if they are from some other insurance company only they have to change the name of this uh, Uh, i mean the nomenclature of our cda rules so it will be either the national insurance company limited cda rules or it will be oriental insurance or it will be united insurance the rules are same only thing is since we have been granted autonomy in uh, all I mean, all the four subsidiaries have been now separated and they have got their each identity therefore the uh, rules are known as cda rules of that particular company so uh, these rules were uh, amended in 2014 by, and the name has been changed from general insurance to the new day insurance company limited or the oriental national or you okay are raj singh raj please mouse mute mouse mute mouse mute okay just scale it up so now when we know that what is our cda rules actually cda rules are what i think you must have gone through the cda rules so i would like to tell you see sir in all sphere of life we are governed by certain rules and regulations of the company be it supposing if you are uh, driving the vehicle in india so you will require to drive the vehicle from the left side of the road same way if you go to us you will be required to uh, drive the vehicle from right side of the road why because the rules of that country is like that and supposing if you breach those rules then definitely you will be book for violation of that traffic rule so in same way we are also governed by certain rules and regulations of the company and what are those rules and regulations of the company see if you are working in underwriting department you have got certain rules if you are working in accounts department accounts department ke rules alag hote hai if you are working in uh, 
claims department, IT sector. So the rules are different, but you need to follow. If you are working in that department, you should never you should gather the information in relating to the work to how the work is being done in that particular department. So now supposing if you deviate from those established rules and regulations of the company, or if you violate those rules and regulations of the company. If you contravene those rules and regulations of the company, if you show disrespect to those rules and regulations of the company, if you show utter disregard to those rules and regulations of the company, if you are found negligent in following the rules and regulations of the company, if you are careless in following the rules of the company, if you are non-adhering or non-observing the rules of, of the company, that means you have committed a misconduct. Now, you'd be all surprised that why I have used so many terminologies that deviation, violation, contravention, showing disrespect, utter disregard, negligence, carelessness, and non-adherence, non-observance. That is nothing but a misconduct because whenever you, if you find any letter which, which is, I mean, uh, focusing on the misconduct, you will find one of the terminology being used. So, any question on this? See, one has to say yes or no. Vidula? No. Gauravji? And no question. So you have understood it. Okay. So misconduct can be of administrative lapses and involving vigilance angle laws. So what are administrative lapses? Like was insubordination. You are not listening to the reasonable order of your superior. If you are remaining absent without informing the office or if you are misbehaving with your superiors. So these are all administrative lapses. And what is involving vigilance angle? Vigilance angle may be supposing because of your act, the financial, there is a financial loss to the company because you have tried to pass on some uh, undue financial advantage to other party or you have tried to gain some financial advantage. So these are all vigilance signs. Now I have told you what is CDA rules. So these rules are applicable to whom? The question comes, the CDA rules are applicable to whom? So it is applicable to all the employees appointed to any post by the company. And the exceptions are officer on deputation from all India services, central services or state services and casual employees. Do you know that some of the employees, those, those who are not on the role of the New Day Assurance Company, but they have been hired from some other organization on deputation. Now, supposing tomorrow if they commit any misconduct, so these CDA rules will not be uh, applicable to them. But that doesn't mean that they will be let off like that only. So they will be tried under their CDA rules. That means the parent company to which they belong, their CDA rules will be invoked to uh, initiate action against those employees who are on deputation. Now, casual employees. So what are casual employees? Casual employees means we have hired some people for performing a specific job for a specific period only. Assuming you are a branch manager, divisional manager or uh, micro office in charge and the office is required to be kept clean, neat and clean. So that is why sweeping is a must and cleaning of the tables, chairs, everything is required. And supposing on a particular day, one employee, uh, one part-time sweeper or full-time sweeper doesn't come to office. So that day you cannot keep the office in an unhygienic condition. You need to clean it by hiring the services of some other person. So that he will be a casual employee. And why CDA rules are not applicable? Supposing if you are not satisfied with the, uh, his performance, you can very well tell him to stop the work and go home because he cannot take any action against you. Had it been a uh, regular employee, then we would have required to invoke the provisions of CDA rules and then take action. So now I have explained it to you what is misconduct what is CDA rules and to whom these CDA rules are applicable. I am going forward. Now see, you, you have come to know what is misconduct. You have come to know, I mean, uh, these CDA rules are applicable to. Now, if a person has committed a misconduct, so whether you will be uh, letting off those people like that only, 
No. Because under our CDA rule, there is a provision to punish erring officials. So that can be a minor penalty or major penalty. Now, so far as the examination is concerned, in order to remember what is minor penalty, you just, I mean, look at the penalty what has been written in the question paper and see whether it's had, it is having a permanent effect or a temporary effect. If it is having a temporary effect, then it's a minor penalty. If it is having a may, may, uh, permanent effect, then it is a major penalty. So what is minor penalty is that I am explaining it to you. Now censure. Censure is nothing but a recorded warning. But this recorded warning can be issued only after the charge sheet has been issued to the employee. So without issuance of charges or without conveying the articles of charges or the misconduct committed by an employee, you cannot impose a penalty of censure. But censure means the moment you uh, issue a censure letter or a recorded warning letter, there won't be any further uh, repercussions of, out of that. When the, the day he has been issued a censure, that case will be closed. Same way, withholding of one or more increments for a specified period. Can anyone tell me when we are supposed to get our increment? When do we get our increment? When do we get our increment? Please ask, please answer someone. On the date of joining the uh, new cadre. On the uh, month of joining. talking about new cadre or date of joining. On the month I'm of asking you when you are supposed to get your annual increment. See, you will get your annual increment from the date of your joining or your date of join or after completion of 365 days of uninterrupted service. So after completion of one year only you will get the annual increment. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. So the it is withholding of one or more increment for a specified period. Now supposing if a penalty has been imposed on you and wherein it is said that his next increment has been withheld for a period of one year. So that is a temporary because his increment will increase subsequent. He will not get increment for one year, but next year when he gets an increment, so his uh, the increment which was withheld by the company will be also restored. So instead of supposing if you are getting a salary of a basic salary of 110, from that you have reduced or if you have uh, withhold his increment, future increment, from 110, he will not go to 120. He will continue to get 110 rupees for one year and after completion of one year, when the next in increment is due, so that time he will get his regular increment plus this increment which has withhold for a temporary period of one year will be restored. That means instead of getting 110 rupees uh, next basic salary, he will be getting 120. That means from 100, he will jump to 120, but he will not get the first increment that is 110. So that will be loss of one year. So this is also a temporary, uh, uh, temporary penalty. Any clarification is required on this, particularly on this? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Now recovery from pay or such other allowances for causing pecuniary loss to the company. Now, supposing because of your act, some financial loss has been caused to the company and you have been charged it, and then subsequently management decide to recover that amount of loss caused by the company due to your action. So that loss will be recovered. So the moment that loss is recovered, the, the penalty doesn't have any effect. I mean, it, it's a temporary penalty. Supposing uh, management recovers, say, 10,000 rupees from you and the moment that 10,000 rupees is uh, recovered, so you don't have to undergo any sort of a mental torture and all. Because that inquiry, uh, that penalty penalty is only for a temporary. Same way, reduction to the lower basic salary temporarily for a period not exceeding three years. Now likewise, we said that any withholding of next increment. But here the reduction to a lower basic salary means today you are getting a salary of 1 lakh, uh, 110 rupees as your basic. It is reduced to 100 rupees. Correct? So your, your increment is already reduced here. 
and supposing if it is for a specific period for one year so after one year that will get restored and this penalty cannot be for more than three years so supposing if anybody's basic salary has to be reduced it cannot be having an impact of more than three years at the most after three years he will get this increment but it will not be it will not go to fourth year so do you understand what is minor penalty now minor penalty will always have a temporary effect now see if you read this censure i have told you it's a recorded warning then withholding of one or more increment for a specified period that means it's a temporary temporary then recovery of for pay or such other allowances that means the moment you have deposited this recovery the penalty is no more on you same way if your basic salary is reduced for a specified period but not exceeding 3 years so after within 3 years supposing at uh, at the most if your basic has been reduced for a period of 3 years so after fourth year you will get all these three increment increment restored so this is also a uh, temporary uh, yes can i ask a question yeah, definitely you are welcome always so uh, uh, reduction to the lower basic salary temporarily for the period not exceeding three years. Suppose a person is getting salary of rupees ten thousand rupees. See, as a basic, whether there is a reduction uh, in the basic for the three years means uh, three increments from the ten thousand or uh, uh, sir, can you say yes, yes, yes. Suppose, supposing no, no, that are not three increments. I say in the reduction or reduction to a lower basic salary, but not exceeding three years. Uh, can Hello, you give can me you example? Me? Yes, yes. Yeah, example. You, sup supposing, supposing ten thousand rupees is basic salary. Now, as you yes. see, the three increments have been reduced. So, from ten thousand, you will come to seven thousand. Yes. Hello. Uh, uh, yeah, supposing yeah. it is for one year. So after seven, see after seven, one year of period of penalty. He will be restored back to 10,000 rupees because for one year only he will not get that basic salary of 10,000 but for 7,000. Oh, someone left. Hello? I, cannot... I think there is some problem with the connection. Yeah, some problem in the connection. Hello, Hanif, sir. You are not audible, sir. Maybe some internet problem connection or problem is there. Session is still alive. Sorry, friends, we have some technical issue. Please bear with us for five minutes.
काय करायचं प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व और नॉट स्टिल नॉट हॅलो 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 हा कॅन यू हिअर मी या सर येस येस ऑडिबल ऍक्च्युली देर वॉज सम टेक्निकल इश्यू सो वी वेर नॉट गेटिंग कनेक्टिव्हिटी एनिवे सो नाव वी वेर टॉकिंग अबाउट रिडक्शन टू अ लोअर बेसिक सॅलरी so i have explained it to you supposing if the penalty has been imposed for reducing the basic salary for a period not exceeding 3 years so after, supposing ma- uh, maximum penalty what has been imposed on is for any he should not get his basic salary uh, his basic salary has been reduced by 3 years for 3 years so after completion of the penalty of 3 years that uh, increment what what was reduced will be restored along with his third years pre- uh, third years increment also so someone was uh, not having the clarity on this whether he has understood it uh, sir Hello. suppose the basic is 1 lakh rupees ha ah. basic is 1 lakh rupees and ah, actually what i will do now man your name you are girish kumar yes sir ha ah, so what we will do now the, after the end of my session now i have i have got one more uh, slides with me so that time i will explain it to you Okay, okay, okay just keep it in mind uh, before we leave yeah. Yeah. okay sir uh, sir one question i have on this sorry yeah, yeah. just yeah, small yeah. question can all these penalties be uh, or any of those these penalties be put, you know applied together or only one can be no no applied? no only one penalty. see if at okay. all you want to i mean here there can be a possibility that there is a financial loss to the company so uh, besides ordering the recovery of that financial loss one of the penalties can be imposed not all okay. the penalties right so one of understood. the penalties because uh, because recovery will be a th- thing which has been made due to uh, financial loss caused to the company because of the inaction or the 
uh, misconduct on the part of the employee. And besides that, he can be even censured or his one increment can be withheld for a period of one year or his basic salary can be re reduced. But that will not be all the penalties in one. Okay. Right. So either two or two can be applied together, right? Uh, yeah. If it is recovery, then no, no, not either. If it is recovery, then one of the penalties amongst A, B and D. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, one more thing, sir. Uh, withholding one or more increment for the specified period or reduction uh -huh. to the lower basic uh, uh, salary to a temporary. Uh -huh. So, withholding, see, that is what I told uh, you. When we get uh -huh. increment, we get increment after completion of continuous uh -huh. service of one year. So, yes. now, supposing if the penalty has been imposed in 2023 and you are likely to get your increment mm -hmm. in august 2024 so that will not be given to you for a period of one year that means you will be getting in august 25 yeah uh, specified period is then three years no? specified Pardon? period specified, uh, specified period, period is always less than three years three years okay uh, sir yes, okay one one question yeah. sir uh, regarding that uh, increment one increment has been withhold for a period of specified period that, uh, that uh, increment also they give for second year? Yes, yes, yes. See, the thing is that that is why I'm telling you it has been withheld for a sp specified period or temporarily for a period of one year. So after undergoing that penalty period of one year, so next year now along with this regular increment, that increment which we, which we have withheld will be released to him. The two increments it will come. Okay. Uh, two increments, no, one increment you are supposed to get last year, which we have not released him because of this penalty. But after completion of that penalty period of one year, that will be restored. And for that, he will not get the arrear. That means for one year, he was deprived of getting the uh, basic salary as well as the DO, uh, DA on it for a period of one year. Okay. Okay. Anyway, uh, I've got one more slide. So at the before I end my session now, you one of them, Girish Kumar, or the other person, Srinivasan, who was talking to me now, he can very well any tell me to show that slide. I will, will show it. Now, difference between warning, caution, and uh, censure. I've already told you before imposing a penalty of censure the charge sheet is required to be issued. Charge sheet may be for major penalty or minor penalty. That can that has to be issued. Before issuing a and without issuing the charge sheet, no person, no employee can be imposed with a penalty of sanction. Okay. Now major penalty. I have told you about uh, minor penalty which has got temporary effect. But a major penalty that has got uh, effects uh, throughout his uh, career. Now, withholding of a more of, uh, one or more increments permanently. That means if you are getting a salary of say, uh, say 1 lakh rupee and your increment is 10,000 rupees and your increment, future increment has withhold for a period of one year. So uh, from 1 lakh, you will not go to 1 lakh 10,000, but you will remain at 1 lakh only. And when one year of penalty period is over that time, when you are supposed to get your annual increment, so one increment that is 1 lakh plus 10,000, that will be your regular increment, 1 lakh 10,000, plus 10,000 which, which was withheld for a period of one year since you have completed the penalty period of one year, so that will be restored. So that will be 1 lakh 20,000. From 1 lakh, you will jump to 1 lakh 20,000. Now you must be wondering the, where, where is the question of penalty comes. So he has already got salary for 1 lakh on 1 lakh basic instead of getting a basic salary of 1 lakh 10,000. Okay. Then reduction to a lower service. Lower service means supposing if a person is in the cater of, say, assistant manager. So penalty can be imposed to reduce his service or post. That is from assistant manager, he can be brought to A walls. But here also you need to keep it in mind that person who has joined in one particular cater. See, supposing if a person has joined as a direct officer, he his post cannot be reduced to that of senior assistant or assistant. Understood. But supposing if a person is promoted from class 3 to class 1, then he can be brought back to class 3 uh, position also. 
or to a lower time scale. Lower time scale means well, you know, suppose if a person has been demoted from assistant manager to AO, so their AO's time scale would be different. So even he can be brought to the lower, lower time scale also. And to a lower stage of basic salary. That means uh, the, uh, we said uh, any reduction to a basic salary. So here also from 1 lakh, he will be brought back, uh, brought down to 90,000 rupees. And he will not get his uh, this increment restored in future anytime. He will continue to get his uh, yearly increment. So uh, the person who was not imposed with the penalty and the person who, ha who has been imposed with this penalty and they have joined together. So the person who was not inflicted with the penalty will always be getting one basic salary more than the person on whom this penalty has been imposed. Now, compulsory retirement. Sometimes what happens after if the gravity of the misconduct is such that the services of the uh, employee is not required by the and uh, the um, disciplinary authority thinks that it is uh, in the, it is not in the interest of the organization to retain then you can have the penalty of compulsory retirement that is nothing but removal from the services can be done so see g and i all are the same compulsory retirement removal from, from the services and dismissal so major penalty to, uh, may, I mean, uh, understand it from the exam point of view, you can just go through that and see, supposing if you find that this is a major, uh, this is a uh, penalty which has, got, uh, which has got the permanent effect, then it will be major penalty. And if it has got a temporary effect, then it will be minor, uh, minor penalty. Sir, compulsory so retirement. Well, huh? retirement. I mean, he will no, no more be in the organization. But See, sir, that retirement can, will be but, on the basis huh. of the penalty imposed on him. But he can get but, all uh, the benefits, sir. But he huh. can get all the benefits. Uh, no, that but I will he... explain it to you. That I will explain it to you. See, normally in a compulsory retirement removed from the services and dismissal are one and the same penalty. Here you will be getting the uh, uh, project fund, which is your own contribution. Then uh, 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 you will be getting your GSL like uh, that saving portion is there. That that also, way, that you will get. So I will explain also it get, to you. In, also, uh, also get pension during compulsory retirement, but in this no no pension is not pension is uh, pension they will not get only supposing if they make an application for some sort of a company on compassionate uh, ground. So his family may or may not get, but that depends. That all depends upon the. Decision of the uh, decision of the appropriate authority. Okay. Now minor penalty. I have already told you that any even for imposing a minor penalty, the charge sheet has to be issued. So the how you will uh, impose a minor penalty unless and until we issue a charge sheet. Charge sheet is nothing but you have to narrate what sort of misconduct he has committed. I am giving you a very small example. Now, uh, a micro office in charge he is supposed to uh, deposit all the cash received by him within uh, in the bank within the permitted time. Suppose if he has deposited after 2-3 days, so the charge sheet will be uh, saying that he has failed to deposit the cash collected by him as an in charge of micro office. The cash which was issued on 10th has been deposited on 17th. So like that, this will be a charge sheet. Then he will explain the reason or he will, uh, I mean, we have to receive a written statement of defense. That written statement of defense itself says the what it, uh, it is meant for. Then you have to negate the charge by giving your satisfactory explanation if at all you have. Now it may so happen that during, the, during that four or five, day, five days delay, there were three holidays. Then fourth day, the computer was not working. Then fifth day, the uh, fifth day, the amount could be deposited. But supposing if uh, there is no substantial reason or there is no substance in their defense, then management can think of imposing this penalty, and that will be decided by the disciplinary authority who has issued the charge. So, any question on this? Yes, no, sir. Here, 
in minor yes, penalty sir. there is no need of having a departmental inquiry that is here the charged employee is given an opportunity to present his case before an independently appointed inquiry officer so here there won't be any inquiry hum bolte hain are inquiry chal raha hai inquiry chal raha hai तो इसमें इंक्वायरी की जरूरत नहीं बिकॉज इट्स अ माइनर पेनल्टी दी चार्जशीट विल बी इश्यूड दी चार्जशीटेड एम्प्लॉय विल सबमिट हिज रिटर्न स्टेटमेंट ऑफ डिफेंस एंड डिपेंडिंग अपॉन हिज एक्सप्लेनेशन दी मैनेजमेंट और द डिसिप्लिनरी अथॉरिटी विल टेक द डिसीजन ऑफ इंपोजिंग आइदर सेंश्योर रिकवरी और रिडक्शन इन बेसिक सैलरी फॉर अ टेम्पररी पीरियड और विथहोल्डिंग ऑफ एनी इंक्रीमेंट फॉर अ टेम्पररी एनी क्वेश्चन ऑन दिस any question on this sir any uh, any time limit for the same uh, in to receive See, normally uh, whenever the charge sheet is issued you are given 15 days time to submit your written statement of oh okay yeah. so i have explained it to you what is misconduct what is cda rules then if there is a misconduct what sort of penalties that is minor penalties and major penalties then how minor penalty uh, can be imposed that also i have explained to you now procedure for ma imposing major penalties so i have already told you in minor penalties there is no need of having an oral inquiry but whenever charge sheet for major penalty is issued then you need to institute a departmental inquiry by appointing an inquiry officer or presenting or inquiry officer and presenting officer so what is inquiry officer inquiry officer an independently appointed inquiry uh, by the company who will look into the allegations leveled against an employee and he will give him ample opportunity to defend himself on the averments of the pre presenting officer so now the question comes can he who can be appointed as inquiry officer so the officers of the company or public servant from other organization also or retired officers can be appointed as inquiry officer so the officer of the company those who are still working or those who have retired from the uh, organization or public servant even a bank official can be an inquiry officer or the case to be looked into by our organization but here one thing you need to you uh, one thing you need to bear in mind that the inquiry officer should be always a, of a higher rank than the charge sheeted employee now supposing if the inquiry charge sheeted employee is assistant manager then the inquiry officer has to be at least deputy manager he can be manager also he can be chief manager and deputy deputy general manager also there is no bar on the higher category but the charge sheeted the cadre of the inquiry officer should be one step at least ahead of the charge sheeted same way even a uh, uh, presenting officer he should be appointed who is not in the equal rank of inquiry officer now supposing inquiry officer is deputy manager then the presenting officer cannot be deputy manager he can be assistant manager and always bear in uh, bear it in mind that the uh, inquiry officer should be uh, always ahead of the uh, ahead in the cadre than the charge sheeted now see there will be certain question sir, whether sir, major question, penalty please. can be ha yaar yeah. sir one question what yeah. about presenting officers cadre sir he that is why i am telling you na presenting officer should be Uh, below the cadre of the inquiry officer no sir now supposing about, if presenting, the, presenting officer and charge sheeted employee ha uh, presenting officer and charge see anyway pre, uh, presenting officer can be even below the rank of the charge sheeted employee also because see he, uh, he will be just presenting the case of of the management where he doesn't have to write his inquiry report whereas inquiry officer is necessarily one step ahead of the charge sheeted employee because supposing if an inquiry is entrusted to a deputy manager and the charge sheeted employee is chief manager do you mean to say that he will be able to do justification no he won't be able to do justification because he will be under uh, he will be always under the influence of the uh, chief manager who is uh, higher in the management hierarchy 
ओके ना हाँ या या यस सर हु इज अपॉइंटिंग इंक्वायरी ऑफिसर हाँ दैट इज द डिसिप्लिनरी अथॉरिटी वो चाइन साइन हिंदी चार्जशीट Now there are certain questions which are always asked in the examination. Whether major penalty can be imposed without oral inquiry? What I have told you. What is the difference between minor penalty and major penalty? Mean minor penalty, no oral inquiry is required. But in major penalty, the uh, oral inquiry is a must. That is, departmental inquiry is a must. So major penalty cannot be imposed without. Oral inquiry. Whether minor penalty can be imposed for major penalty charge sheet? Now major penalty charge sheet has been issued, but after the end of the inquiry, the inquiry officer is that the, he is not uh, directly responsible for committing this sort of a uh, misconduct, but he was just an assistant who has uh, wrongly put up the note, or uh, he was not uh, well informed of the procedure, but. The person who has uh, recommended and settled the claim are in a higher position, and they should be knowing this. So that time, instead of imposing a major penalty on this clerk now or this assistant, management can think of uh, imposing a minor penalty. Okay. Now, whether major penalty can be imposed for minor penalty? See, I have given an answer, no. But what is the reason? Can anyone tell? आपको अभी बताया ना मैंने कैन यू फॉर इम्पोजिंग अ मेजर पेनल्टी इंक्वायरी इज अ मस्ट बट इन माइनर पेनल्टी वी डोंट कंडक्ट ओरल इंक्वायरी देर फॉर फॉर माइनर पेनल्टी वी के नॉट इम्पोज अ मेजर पेनल्टी ओके एक्सप्लेन इट टू यू For imposing a major penalty, the oral inquiry or departmental inquiry is a must. Supposing if the major penalty charge sheet has been issued and the charges proved against the employee is not that serious, then a uh, management can think of imposing a minor penalty. But if a major penalty charge sheet, uh, if a major penalty has to be issued. After receipt of written defense, uh, written statement of defense in respect of minor penalty charges, the main major penalty cannot be imposed because you have denied him the personal hearing or the oral hearing or oral inquiry or department. Am I clear? Are you are you clear about this? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now various proceedings. Now, in inquiry, you will find that there are various uh, proceedings. So, I am just focusing uh, this entire session or entire PPT has been prepared on the basis of uh, looking into the various questions which are being asked in the examination. So, what is rule number twenty nine? That is common proceeding. Now, common proceeding itself means that there there is one more than one employee involved in commission of any misconduct. Now, likewise, supposing if a claim has been settled by DCC, and that is proved to be a wrong claim, then who else, who all will be come into picture in for settlement of this claim? On Ayanga Usmeyar, the claim has been settled wrongly by DCC. So, who all will be involved? Please answer. All DCC members, correct. So now, supposing if the charge sheet has been issued, so instead on there are four witnesses. So instead of calling one witness and one charge sheeted employee at one time, and subsequently asking the same question to them in second inquiry, third inquiry. So instead of that, what we do now, we uh, institute a common uh, common departmental inquiry proceedings, where all the three charge sheeted employees will come and the. Uh, Witness will come in front of them. They will, uh, he will be examined by PO and cross examined by all the three employees. So that is called common proceedings. You understood, or you want me to uh, make it more clear? Uh, suppose sir, uh, two officers are involved. Uh, for suppose for the claim settlement, one is recommending, second is approving. Yeah. 
and uh, uh, say for the in charge say uh, scale 3 is recommending uh, scale 5 uh, is uh, approving and uh, some uh, scale 2 is uh, generating the voucher or disbursement or say system approval then uh, in this uh, circumstance if anything happens the common procedure will be initiated under rule 3 or rule 29 is it so correct 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 absolutely correct yeah, right? Absolutely. Because all are involved in this matter. Yes, yes. Correct, correct. Thank correct. you. Okay. Now we come to rule number 30, that is special procedure. I have already explained it to you before imposition of major penalty. The oral inquiry is a must. Is a must. That means departmental inquiry is must. You need to issue a charge sheet. You should get the written statement of defense from the employee concerned. And inquiry will be held. And depending upon the outcome of the inquiry, inquiry and the report of the inquiry officer, the disciplinary authority will decide the quantum of punishment made it out to the hiring official. Okay. But there are two exceptions to this. What is that ex exception? Now, supposing if a person has been convicted for having committed a criminal offense involving moral turpitude, and he, uh, the court decision is to send him for uh, three years rigorous imprisonment. And he was in jail for three years. You just tell me whether such employee, will, uh, whether it is, it is correct on the part of the company to dismiss them immediately or to keep them in service. You tell me. Sir, jawab dijiye aap. No, not uh, at all. I think so. Ah, because it is not because because in the interest of the security of the organization, it is not expedient to hold the inquiry because mm -hmm. he has been already declared as a criminal, and we don't appoint any person uh, who is having a criminal background. Even before we are taken into organization, our characters and antecedents are verified, and then only we have been given an offer offer of appointment. So the exception for imposition of uh, major penalty of termination or dismissal, one of the uh, reason is if he has been convicted on criminal charge. The other one is abandonment of services. Have you heard this word abandonment of services? Now you have been appointed uh, appointed to work on any cadre. So what is expected of you that you will regularly attend the office and whenever you are not present in the office or you are seeking leave, that necessary information has to be given to your immediate boss or immediate office. Mm -hmm. What is abandonment of service? You will find in most of the offices, I believe you must have experienced also, some of the employees, they don't come to office for months together. That yeah. means they are neither informing about their absence. They don't have sufficient due to their credit. They don't have. They have not submitted their application. They have not. Sub, they have not taken the approval of the competent of the authority. They don't have sufficient balance to their credit. They don't uh, give sufficient reason or reasonable reason to remain remain absent. And if that period of absence is exceeding more than ninety days. That means that person is no more interested in continuing with the service of the organization. And therefore, without conducting the inquiry against such employees, their services can be terminated. Okay. So that yes, is what for that 90 days period is there. We are supposing in within 90 days period, if they don't resume to uh, resume their services, then uh, you can invoke the provisions of rule number 30 under special procedure and to directly dismiss him from the services of the company. Now the questions come, the supposing if they join before 90 days, then also you have got a right to initiate action against him by initiating RDA major. major penalty proceeding But for that you will need to conduct an inquiry. Okay. So you know what is common proceedings and what is special procedure. Then yeah. comes the ex party proceedings. So you must have heard ex party proceedings, ex party hearings. What is that? One sided. Oh, first, uh, well, you first one tell sided. me. Uh, one sided. Not it is one sided. Now, supposing uh, inquiry may kitne log involved with it. Who are the person who are actually conducting this inquiry? One is inquiry officer. Hmm. Am I right? Hmm. 
one is presenting officer who is presenting the case on behalf of the management and third person is the employee concerned is to charge sheet kiya hai so all these three people will be will be present there now out of these three uh, uh, three people supposing one person who remains absent who you can identify kon rehta hai ya absent kon rehta hai employee डिफॉल्टिंग हानि का तनेजा हेलो आपका लड़का भी ट्रेनिंग ले रहा है क्या फोटो है क्या ओके तो एक्स पार्टी प्रोसीडिंग द इंक्वायरी इज बीइंग कंडक्टेड बाय इंक्वायरी ऑफिसर प्रेजेंटेड बाय द मैनेजमेंट साइड दैट इज पीओ एंड हर्ट बाय Uh, or uh, the opportunity is given to the charged employee to rebut the allegation against him and normally what happens na the charged employee is on one or the other pretext he doesn't attend the inquiry because he feels that the if the inquiry is delayed na no, no harm will be caused to him therefore suppose if an employee doesn't come for attending the inquiry on the first time then you have to give him second time second chance also and third chance also and after third chance you, even if he doesn't come then you need to proceed with the inquiry proceedings without his attendance so jab inquiry officer will be there then the presenting officer will present his case and uh, the charged employee does, uh, since not present he will not get an opportunity to cross examine so in that case inquiry officer if he wants to get some sort of a clarification can pose question to presenting officer but in ex party proceeding it has to be necessarily ensured that after the end of the days proceedings are over you need to send the minutes of that particular days proceedings to the charged employee then it will be called a ex parte proceeding because what has been transacted on that particular day whatever has happened during that day should be in the knowledge of the charged okay sir so, uh, rule 30 yeah. please one line sentence explanation pardon rule pardon rule 30 rule 30 line yeah ha ah, special so that is a special procedure See, yeah. I told you that being a employee of the organization, if a person has to be meted out with the uh, major penalty, so oral inquiry is a must. But only yes. two exceptions are there. The one is if a person is already convicted on criminal charges, is undergoing an imprisonment of three years, four years, one year, fifteen days, twenty days. So such person can be immediately dismissed from the services of the company based on the court's judgment. and okay. same way if a person is remaining absent from 90 days without submitting application without sufficient cause without sufficient due to his credited without informing the office without taking the prior approval of the organization of the office and his whereabouts are not not known so instead of instituting a departmental inquiry against him he can be immediately terminated provided his such days of unauthorized absence is Continuously for more than ninety days. Ninety days. Understood. Understood. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sure. See, sometimes if you are appointed as an inquiry officer, you will find that the similarly the case is being contested in the CBI court also. Now, a claim has been settled wrongly for say fifty crores of rupees. so definitely cbi will come into picture and cbi will also take an action based on their findings and simultaneously we have also issued a charge sheet to him so now the questions comes into the mind that when cbi is also taking action against the erring official under C, uh, corruption of prevention act and the case is being contested in cbi so since the case uh, case is already in court whether uh, whether on the basis of the case being subjudiced an inquiry can be held under our cda rules or not but it is not like that two simultaneous inquiries can be uh, concurrently can be going on the one in a one under our cda rules and one under the criminal procedure act so 
supposing tomorrow if the finding in the case is that that the man uh, that the charges were not proved against the concerned employee so that decision will not be binding on us we can straight away go ahead with our cda rule because that case was contested under prevention of corruption act whereas we will be looking into the case from the point of view of cda rules so uh, supposing udar agar ho chhut gaya if he has been acquitted in the cbi court that doesn't mean that uh, we will have also required to exonerate him from the charge same way supposing if they have uh, penalized him penalized him or uh, so if, if they have not penalized him and he has been acquitted uh, honorably not convicted acquitted honorably but still uh, depending upon our findings we can impose a penalty so that is the difference the concrete inquiry means one inquiry will be conducted by cbi in the court and department inquiry will be conducted by us depending upon the findings in the court even if they releases him or uh, he has been acquitted uh, acquitted with honor that doesn't mean that we cannot impose the penalty so it is vice versa any question on this yes sir is there any pecuniary limit set uh, that a matter goes to cbi uh, they yeah, see that uh, earlier supposing cbi has got some source information so they were uh, doing the investigation on their own but now since 2018 there is an amendment to the rule we say that we are all public servant all the employees of public sector companies are public servant if a public servant uh, the servant has to, the matter relating to any public servant has to be investigated by the cbi then cbi approaches our company and they ask for our permission to investigate that matter so once the once the company gives uh, approval for investigating the matter then it is up to the cbi to investigate the matter but simultaneously uh, in the matter has been investigated by us without waiting for the outcome of the cbi we can start our inquiry no i was so asking I about Particularly limit. That is financial limit. Certain amount. That uh, earlier you said. See that depends. See uh, what you say is correct. Normally these people now uh, they don't take a, a case which is involving a lesser amount. But that also depends upon the decision of the CBI. Because I have seen CBI have also uh, looked into the cases where they thought that it was a case involving con uh, criminal conspiracy between our employees and the. Uh, the uh, other party is in what so they took a case of 50000 rupees also okay okay no people limit set ha ah, yeah no uh, there is no threshold limit okay thank you sir uh, this also questions come that employees not to seek outside employment without pre sanction of the competent authority so we have been appointed as a full time full time either assistant officers were there so our office timing is from 10 to 6 o'clock now why this timing has been uh, i mean mentioned as 10 to 6 6 o'clock can anyone say that say 6 baje tak kyu kiya 8 se 8 baje tak kyu nahi kiya see after having a detailed studies they thought that i mean the uh, the the efficiency of an can be good till from 10 to 6 uh, that is how many hours 8 hours 8 hours hour. so they have decided that their person can effectively perform the work with efficiency during this period of 8 hours only uh, by leaving a we said that half an hours time what we get for lunch and all okay therefore now supposing if a person well, you must have experience if a person comes early in the morning and some documents are given for underwriting so at what speed he does he does very fast then after 3 4 hours he will do it at a slower place at the evening i mean before close of office hours if you give him five uh, documents for underwriting so he, he will make his face in such a way that you will feel that he is not interested in uh, giving this output that means the 8 hours of time what has been decided by the organization is correct now assuming a person is uh, ha has got an opportunity to work on part time basis say early in the morning 
supposing if he attends from 7 to 9:30 that is two and a half hours and if he comes to office whether he will be having the same sort of a energy or passion for looking for doing that job definitely not same way after uh, six o'clock, if he goes and he works uh, somewhere else till uh, ten o'clock, so will not be the proper rest, and definitely next day also his performance will not be that as that uh, which will be what he was giving the pre previous outcome. So employees not to undertake part time work without prior permission. Now see, even though. The rule says that they cannot uh, go for part-time work without seeking permission. So there may be certain people who take the permission that they want to work as a part-time uh, part-time employees in some other organization. But here, the management will say that, okay, you are permitted to work, but whatever amount you are getting by way of honorarium, salary, part-time uh, job, that entire amount will be required to be deposited with the office. Then office will take the call that how much amount has to be apportioned between the employee and the, the company, that is employer. Therefore, I don't think any, any person must be approaching office to seek permission because supposing if they are getting 10,000 rupees by way of a part-time employment and tomorrow company says 8,000 rupees will keep and 2,000 rupees will give it to you. So nobody will go there. Am I right? Yes. Did sir. you understand this? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Any question? Any question on this? No, sir. Okay. Now, Liu rules. There is always a question. So, Liu cannot be asked as a matter of right. See, you will find that some of the people under the pretext that they have got 200 days of PL to their credit, they will not attend the office without informing or without submitting an application and subsequently they will say, well, no, no, actually I was intending to take the PL for 15 days, but I forgot. It's not like that. Our rules say that whenever you want to go on a long leave, you need to take the permission of your immediate boss before you proceed on leave and ensure that you have submitted the application that is sanctioned also. And there is a sufficient due to your credit. Then only that will be Sanction and uh, supposing if I am a divisional accountant and I, I want to proceed in the uh, lieu in the month of March, say from 1st of March to 15th of February, whether such lieu can be granted to the divisional accountant that time? No, sir. Can it be, can it be granted? No, sir. Uh, no, why? Because the entire closing account, the work related to closing of accounts will get hampered. So th th that means if a person, even though he's got sufficient due to his credit, cannot ask due as a matter of his right. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Mm. But there is an exception. One day CL you can go without informing the office, provided the moment you come back to office after completion of that one day CL, you need to submit your written application or now nowadays it is being loaded in the system by giving the results. So unless it is entered in the system, I mean the, that will not be uh, that will not be called as an authorized. Secondly, late attendance or early leaving for more than three occasions leads to forfeiture of half day CL. Now our timing is ten o'clock to quarter to six every day. But mm. there are people they think that they, uh, I mean uh, the management will make a, a late mark only after you attend office after 10.30. Anyway, even if it is 10.30, but the moment that 10.30's time limit is uh, passed or 10 o'clock's time limit is passed and such occasions have been noticed by the management which is more than three days. So either late attendance or early going. All put together, if it is more than three days, uh, three, three occasions, then that employee's half day will be debited. From his leave, one half day will be uh, debited. Whether this uh, this practice is being followed in all the offices, <laughs> uh, it is being followed. I think I think that means the uh, union are very weak there. Otherwise, union come into picture. Anyway, then the next rule is can't leave each headquarter without prior permission. What do you mean by this? 
see i am posted to pune but i belong to head office so my headquarter so far as working in the organization is concerned is head headquarter and my hometown is bombay now assuming the saturday and uh, after friday on saturday sunday i don't like to be in pune i want to go back to uh, to mumbai to meet my families and all but whenever you are leaving headquarter it is compulsory that you need to inform the office and take the permission that during this uh, holidays i am proceeding to my hometown which may please be noted and that will be sanctioned to now the question comes the why this has been made a rule because tomorrow supposing if something goes wrong about that employee so at least his whereabouts are known to the organization any yes. question on this review review rules no ek minute ek minute that is see there was a one question that late attendance or early leaving for more than uh, three occasions should be pertaining to how much period that is one one calendar month during one calendar any question any question no sir. yes or no no okay no sir no sir. okay now we come to competent authorities any who are, who is competent to appoint or who is competent to uh, take a disciplinary action or who is competent to uh, who is competent before whom we can make an appeal sir not audible now ha huh? yes not audible pardon not audible sir not coming not not audible okay Others, whether others sir, are audible. able to hear, audible, audible sir, sir. Oh, audible yeah. sir. So, uh, have you gone through the CDA rules? No, sir, it's not. You are not going gone through CDA rules. Are you are upping? Up yes, sir. Through gone. the CDA rules, and you must have joined uh, much before. Uh, I mean, the, some people must have. Some are. Uh, quite any senior some might be juniors also but uh, since they are eligible to appear for this examination so they must have completed at least 3 years of service or 4 years of service so you should have got yourself acquainted with the cd rules anyway i am just giving i mean who are the competent authorities now if you go to cd rules and at the back of the cd rules now you will find schedule b which shows various authorities that is appointing authority means who is a competent to appoint a person on a specific designation then disciplinary authority disciplinary authority is the authority who is authorized to initiate disciplinary action against some se uh, section of people and appellate authority means after the penalty has been imposed likewise in uh, law, court what we do lower court if the uh, if the decision is not in our favor we go to high court if it is uh, even it is not favorable in high court we go to supreme court the same is same sort of an uh, i mean the layers are provided in our organization also that there is a disciplinary authority appellate authority and memory now after appointing authority appointing authority means is a person who is authorized to appoint a person on that particular post now assuming a person has been appointed under the signature of a disciplinary uh, uh, under the signature of a deputy general manager though he is manager nay no, sorry though he is assistant so his even his appointment letter could have been issued by manager also is in scale 4 but I, at the time of initiating major penalty proceedings against him as per disciplinary authority manager was appointed as disciplinary authority but the charges proved against the charged employees were so serious that it required it warranted dismissal of his services so that time first what we have to ensure is to see who was the present uh, appointing authority that particular employee and who has signed his appointment letter since his appointment letter was signed by disciplinary uh, uh, dgm then his termination order will be also required to be passed by the appointing authority only though the disciplinary authority was manager any question on this because well, normally there will there will be question that who is competent to 
terminate this uh, displace or remove this uh, employee from the services. So it will be not less than the uh, designation of an uh, appointing authority. समझ गया आपको? One yes, question sir. on this. Yeah. Can the can it be also someone who is uh, above the appointing authority? Is it necessary? Yes, yes definitely not less than appointing authority. That's what I have told. Okay. Right. But that time you should uh, keep it in mind that by doing so his rights of appeal and uh, memory doesn't get prejudiced. Okay, sir. I have already told you, uh, supposing if a penalty has been imposed on any of the employees, so definitely you will never be happy that some penalty has been imposed. You will always plead innocence. So likewise in court, from lower court, we go to higher court. So in the same way from disciplinary authority, the matter will be referred to appellate authority. That is under Rule 31. And uh, that, uh, yeah. uh, difference, what is difference between dismissal and termination actually? That is one and the same. One and the that same. That is one and the same. Yeah. But in dismissal, now, uh, there are uh, the very remote chances of the person getting reinstated again. Yeah. In dismissal, uh, all the benefits are forfeited and even terminal, terminal uh, termination also. Yeah. yeah. Same same termination, voluntary retirement. Uh, sorry. Uh, this compulsory retirement. Uh, all those three penalties will uh, will be having the same impact on the future of the employee. So now, uh, by being agreed by the decision of the disciplinary authority, he will prefer an appeal to appellate authority. And that appeal has to be submitted within th three months or 90 days from the date of receipt of order. That means, supposing if a penalty has been imposed on 1st of January, so he gets a chance to uh, file his uh, appeal by first of uh, April, because three months uh, three months will be getting over on thirty first of March. So by first of April he needs to submit his appeal. But why it is written that from the three months from the date of receipt of order? Now a penalty has been imposed on say ex employee by one RO and the, that person is working in DO which is quite far off and that hard copy reaches that particular employee after 10 days. So that 90 days period or 3 months period will be counted from the date on which he has acknowledged the receipt of that order. Understood? Mm. Now yes. in appeal what will happen? In court what happens? Uh, either your penalty will be increased or it will be decreased or you will be let off and you will be even exonerated. The same way in appeal also, this three decision can take place. But supposing if the penalty has to be modified, that, that is, and if the penalty has to be increased, that is, instead of two increments, he wants to impose three increments. So appeal may kuch bhi ho sakta hai. But that cannot be imposed without giving an opportunity to the employee to make his representation. But appeal ke baad mein, there can be uh, rejection, there can be modification by of reducing the penalty or increasing the penalty. Okay. Any question on this? See, appeal has to be submitted within 90 days of receipt of the uh, order of the disciplinary authority. And that is, uh, uh, that rule is uh, the submission of that Appeal within the 90 days is falling under Rule 32. And after the receipt of the appeal, the appellate authority can reject that appeal, can enhance the penalty or can reduce the penalty. Now, in court, what happens if your appeal has been rejected by the court, by the high court? Then you get a chance to prefer appeal before the Supreme Court. Here also it can be preferred before a memorial authority. And here the uh, time limit what is given is six months from the date of receipt of the order. There it was 90 days, that is three months. Here it is six months. Here also after the receipt of the memorial, memorial, the memorial authority can reduce the penalty, can reject the appeal, can enhance the penalty also. 
any question on this so my appeal has to be preferred within 90 days and memorial has to be preferred within 6 months now we come to suspension even, even appeal against the order of the memorial can be presented before civil no no that is the last now once supreme court decides that this penalty is uh, correct so you cannot make any appeal. then no, you have no, got no. a liberty to approach the court yeah, uh, what you if you find that the penalty, penalty is not in commensurate with the misconduct committed by you, and you have got certain cases with you where, on for similar nature of allegation, he was he was imposed with a lesser penalty compared to yours, then you can approach the court. Because because See, in court, what happens now, the moment you approach the court first, they will ask you whether you are exhausted all the avenues. What is available to you under your CDA rule? That is whether you have made an appeal, whether you have made an uh, memorial. If both the uh, things are rejected, then only they will uh, consider your case. The jurisdiction lies with the High Court only. Pardon that? Ah, yeah. yeah. After, after yes, yes. Is you have to approach the uh, High Court. High Court. And one more thing, if the appeal of the employee is rejected, then he can make the memorial to CMD. Even CMD. the when then, he see, I will tell you, up to the cater of scale 3, it is CMD. Because yeah. for scale 5, the disciplinary authority is general manager. Oh. So yeah. his appeal will go to uh, CMD and he can make an appeal before the subcommittee of the uh, board of directors or board of right. directors as the case may. Uh, after yeah. the first appeal, that means to May, after the passing of the disciplinary order, he makes the appeal to the competent authority. Uh, uh, appellate is, authority. Appellate uh, yeah, appellate authority. authority. If it is not rejected past any order, he can uh, also make the memorial to the CMB. Yes, yes, definite. Definite. Yeah, not only now, the, now the question comes if the charge sheet has been issued by CMD. So appeal will go to subcommittee of the board and memorial will be placed before board of directors. That was the recent amendment some made somewhere in 2014, okay. I believe, because what has happened, I will give you an example in one of the employees whose case was being dealt with by me only. He was in the cater of uh, managers. So his uh, disciplinary authority was general manager and there was no room for preferring an appeal and the memorial was to be considered by CMD. So this person approached the court and he stated that uh, since I, be, I am a general manager, so my appeal will be considered by CMD, but I will not, uh, not get one uh, opportunity to represent my case before the memorial. So therefore, there were subsequent uh, changes in our CDA rule and there comes into picture the uh, subcommittee of the board and board of directors. Okay. Which year? Which year? Uh, I, I have forgotten the year now, but it may be uh, not before 2014. Okay. 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 Now, suspension. Do you mean what is meant by suspension? Do you know? Tem what is suspension? Ah, yeah, tell me. Yes. See, uh, though it is, no, though it is not uh, in a literal sense, but to make you understand, we can assume that the uh, temporary termination of any employee, uh, the termina temporary termination of contract of employment of any employee. It's not like that, but only thing is that he is no more required to perform his duty. He will not be allowed to come, come to office. And a person can be placed under suspension when. So these are the two circumstances that if a disciplinary proceeding is contemplated, or pending against an employee. Now, supposing if a person has misappropriated a premium of say 60-70 lakhs of the organization and there is a prima facie evidence to establish the charge against such employee. So, whether supposing if he comes to office, there are definitely chances of the record getting tampered with, stolen, misplaced or even the witnesses being influenced by him. Therefore, such people are placed under uh, suspension. They are not allowed to attend any of the office and do any work. And secondly, supposing if any case against any employee in respect of criminal office is under investigation or trial, 
अगर उसके अगेंस्ट केस कोर्ट में चल रहा होगा या ट्रायल में रहेगा इफ वी आर इन द नॉलेज ऑफ दैट सम क्रिमिनल केस इज गोइंग अगेंस्ट हिम और द सीबीआई इज अंडर द इन्वेस्ट इज इन्वेस्टिगेटिंग द मैटर तो दैट टाइम आल्सो वी कैन प्लेस हिम अंडर सस्पेंशन तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू सस्पेंशन इज नॉट अ पेनल्टी सस्पेंशन इज नॉट अ पेनल्टी Suspension is not a penalty. What is the fault of the employee? That yes, case is going against them. So whether they should be deprived of their uh, sa uh, salary. Before that, I would like to tell you: one is regular suspension, the other one is deemed suspension. That word itself uh, says that the deemed suspension means that person is not before you. You are unable to serve the order to him. and that situation comes when if an employee is detained in the custody for police custody for more for a period exceeding 40 hours is deemed to have been placed under suspension from the date of his detention till further order now a person has been charged uh, or has been caught by the police on the suspicion of he having murdered one person so he will be taken into uh, custody and you will never come to know and after some time you come to know that this person has been detained by the police or he is in police custody or judicial custody and the period of that custody is more than 48 hours then the moment you come to know you can place that employee under suspension from the date on which he was caught by the police and detained in the police custody understood no yeah so now the question comes up from which uh, which time you need to uh, count the 48 hours now sometimes it may so happen that uh, he has been caught on friday and saturday sunday there was no court because of the holidays or uh, weekly off and he was produced on monday for seeking bail and he gets the bail so whether 48 hours are over or the period of that mandatory custody of 48 hours is exceeded yes. or not yes exceeded exceeded yes but whether the, that reason is attributable to uh, any sort of uh, uh, or uh, on this particular employee applicable sir how it is applicable yes. because saturday sunday was the uh, court holidays no, see the moment you is on monday yeah. he no, was produced no. on monday he got the bail so uh, when you are calculating 48 hours the declared holiday or period of declared holiday should not be counted for purpose of counting the 48 hours yeah you understood but, uh, it is under, it is understood that the officer should be 24 on duty so that uh, even it is on holiday no 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 sir you are not understanding see yes. he has already been arrested yes he has been arrested on say friday evening yeah and saturday sunday uh, uh, court being closed due to a weekly holidays the yes. police could produce him before the judge on monday yeah so monday he got the bail that means yes. this 48 hours which he That's was under really. the police custody it was not out of his free will it was just because the uh, court were closed had it been uh, had uh, assuming that he was arrested on monday and he was he could have been uh, produced before court on tuesday so he would have got yeah. the bail immediately yeah. <laughs> but here this two uh, two days period was of holiday therefore whenever you want to calculate 48 hours of detention so the period of uh, uh, the, sorry holiday holiday period has to be excluded from that okay. now you understood yes yes now suspension i have already told you that it is not a penalty so the question of disciplinary authority doesn't come into picture so who can uh, who can uh, revoke his suspension the person who has placed him under suspension can revoke the suspension okay now i already told you suspension is not a penalty because we have yet to uh, come to the conclusion whether this person is guilty or not guilty but mm -hmm. during say how much time it is going to come to the conclusion we don't know. so therefore in order to ensure that he survives with his family 
and is uh, any uh, he is able to manage his daily expenses and all so as per rule of the company if he has been placed under suspension he will be getting 40 50% of the monthly gross emoluments for the first 6 months of his suspension supposing if he has been suspended of 1st of january till 30th of june he will be getting the 50% of his gross emoluments as subsistence allowance so that will not be treated as salary now after 6 month still the management is not able to complete the inquiry or investigation that means he is not at fault so his subsistence allowance will be increased to 75% after completion of 6 months supposing if you are getting say 10000 rupees as 50% so now after 6 months he will start getting 15000 It is by five thousand, so it will be fifteen thousand, which is equivalent to seventy-five percent of his salary. Gross. Now, supposing the employee doesn't come forward and doesn't cooperate in completing the investigation or completing the inquiry, and therefore no conclusion can be drawn by the management. Therefore, here the management is at not fault. This person is at fault. So that time the subsistence surplus was given to the extent of fifty percent will be reduced to twenty five percent. That means this twenty thousand rupees is gross emolument first month, first six month. We are giving him ten thousand rupees. He has cooperated. Therefore, we increase it to seventy five percent. That is fifteen thousand. But in case if he doesn't cooperate, then his uh, basic has to be reduced from fifty percent to twenty percent. That means instead of getting ten thousand rupees. Or fifty thousand rupees, he will get. Uh, he will be getting five thousand rupees. But if a person has been detained by the police under police custody or judicial magistrate, so whatever period he spent in the detention for which he is not, uh, he is not entitled to get any subsistence at all, because he might he might have been arrested by the police on the basis of the criminal offence which has been lost against. so subsistence allowance is given to employee to take care of his family and in the first 6 month it will be given 50% and it will be increased to 75% if the management is not able to complete that inquiry or investigation within 6 month for which there is no fault on the part of the employee but it will be reduced to 25% if there is a no cooperation from the employee in completing the inquiry and if a person has been detained under the police custody which is more than 48 hours and that is just for having committed any misconduct which is a criminal offence involving moral turpitude you will not get any subsidy any question on this no now treatment no. of sir pardon yes any question no no sir so now ha ah, yeah yes no sir no sir no no no, no sir. sir now we are coming to any what is how the uh, period of suspension has to be treated now i have already told you ki when you started giving subsistence allowance and placing that person under suspension you had no clue whether the charges are going to be proved or not now finally what has happened he has been uh, if he has been honorably acquitted and no charge could be proved against him either in departmental inquiry in court proceedings then he will be entitled to get full pay and allowances now he was getting 20 he was his salary was 20000 as you think the pot first 10 or 6 months he paid him 10000 so he will get the difference between his salary and subsistence allowance that is 10000 rupees per month he subsists for 6 months he will get 60000 rupees when he has been reinstated and his period of suspension see for suspension has been done at the behest of the request of the management because management thought that any he has committed a serious misconduct therefore they have placed him under suspension but subsequently after the inquiry was conducted he was he was found to be innocent 
So whatever period, that six months period, which has undergone as suspension period, that will be considered as if he has he has spent that period on duty. You understood. I mean, for his he, he will be that period will be counted for counting his uh, service period, entire service. That means yeah, I assume, benefits, uh, leave benefits will be committed to him. Suppose the service. Yes, uh, yes, yes. New benefits will be uh, given. Suppose if there, in between there is a base revision that will be given. And a leave benefits also? A leave benefit, that is why I am saying now that this entire period which he has spent on uh, suspension will be treated as if he was on duty for those six months. On duty for all benefit. But under no circumstances, substance allowance will be recovered. Now, assuming that he has been found guilty by the court. And he has been ordered to undergo imprisonment of three years. Or we have uh, imposed a major penalty on him. So that means the uh, suspension period is confirmed. And therefore, no salary will, I mean, no additional amount will be given to him. Neither the amount which is paid by way of a subsistence allowance will be recovered by from him. If he has been proved guilty. Okay. Any question on this? No, sir. No. Now, now the, uh, there is one topic, defense assistant, and who can be appointed, who cannot be appointed, this sort of a question comes. Now, in court, what we find that judge is there, prosecution, uh, prosecutor, that is public prosecutor is there, and uh, ROP is there, that is uh, charged employee is there or suspect, suspect employees. In addition to that, you find one more person. Who is that person? Defense assistance. Defense ah, defense. No, I'm saying about court. So dealing advocate. He hires yes. one advocate on behalf of himself to be defended in the court. Hmm. Same way, we have been also, uh, we have also permitted any of the employee who has been issued a charge sheet to get assistance of any employee of the same region to act as a defense assistant or to help him in the inquiry proceeding as defense So first and foremost thing is that he should be necessarily an employee only, not even retired employee. And from the same company only. Now supposing if a charge sheet issued to an employee who is working in Oriental Insurance, he cannot hire the service of services of an employee who is in United, Oriental or National though they are from the insurance industry. But he should be from the same company only and from the same region only. Region means you are you are defined your region. So which all other offices uh, working under that region can be uh, permitted to work as a defense assistant. Now the question comes now, for example, in New India head office, which is situated in Mumbai, there are n number of offices. There are MRO 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, LCBOs, like that. There are n number of offices and their branches. So since that is pertaining to one geographical area, that is Mumbai. So any employee of Mumbai can be a defense assistant for a person against whom the uh, charge sheet has been issued and he belongs to a, one of the offices in Mumbai. But for other regional offices, if they are from, uh, from different Geographically uh, situated at a different place, so that is, that is not possible. Then legal practitioner can't be engaged as defense assistant. Sometimes you will find that the uh, uh, employee against whom the charge sheet has been issued, he becomes very aggressive. He says, "I am going to seek the help of the legal practitioner or an advocate and ask, uh, and I would like you to permit me to act him to permit this legal practitioner as my defense assistant. So it is not permitted because it has been made very, uh, very explicitly clear that only employees of that particular company will be allowed to work as defense assistant. So legal practitioner cannot be engaged as defense assistant. Then defense assistant cannot act more than two cases at a time. So, a person who wants to work as a defense assistant of an employee from the same region, he can act at a time in two cases. Now, why this rule has been made, I, I can tell you. See, we have been appointed to work for the organization. 
that means we have been assigned with different uh, duties if you are in accounts department accounts underwriting underwriting claims claim it it if you are in hr you are doing that one now supposing by virtue of my expertise i want to become defense assistant in all the cases so definitely my office work will be hampered therefore this condition is imposed that he cannot be working for more than two cases at a time same way same way he, he should be from the same region because what happens now supposing for person who is having an expertise in defending the people he is from uh, say chandigarh so uh, he will get a naturally one kya bolte hai apna pura india tour ka hi pass mil jayega usko he will be attending all the inquiries pertaining to all the regional offices therefore that uh, that condition is imposed but in spite of that supposing if an employee insists that no i want this da only though he is not from the same region or he is working for more than two cases at a time so that time the management will allowed him to work as a defense assistant by overlooking this two condition that he is working for more than two years or he is from other region but that time it will be not treated as if he is on official duty so whatever expenses he has to incur traveling expenses his lodging boarding expenses that will be that will be required to be borne by the employee only who wish to have him as his defense assistant any sir, question on this yeah, ah. yes sir is this condition applicable for the uh, presenting officer and uh, was the inquiry officer They, they no, no, that is not. See, anyway, the, that is the job of the management. Management wants this inquiry to be completed as early as possible, and definitely yes. they will also look into the viability. That is, we saw with the expenses involved in that. Supposing if an inquiry has been interest to the, a person who is in from, and I have been interested in inquiry which is at Guwahati, so definitely my journey will be long. So expenses will be long. My uh, stay will be long. and how much time that is going to take that is not known to me therefore management seldom appoint such people on uh, as an inquiry officer from some other region unless and until some expertise is required like was supposing if the charge sheet is issued to say chief manager then the, to get a dgm from that area would would not be possible or if you find a crm who is in the capacity of scale five So naturally, the DGM will come from other uh, other place also. Yeah, hope I have clear clarified you. Yes. 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 Uh, See, sir, this is an. Sir, sir uh, excuse yes. me. Can retired employee uh, act as defense assistant? No. no. I I've already made it clear. Necessarily, employee of the company. Miss, that See, only retired are... employee retired employees can be appointed as inquiry officer only, not even presenting officer. Okay, okay, sir. Are you aware about this rule? This has been this rule uh, is also I mean incorporated uh, recently, but still some uh, period must have uh, elapsed. So this rule four twenty says no employee shall indulge in any act of sexual harassment of any of a woman at her workplace. So this is also misconduct. And uh, see, I can tell you, see how we respect our wife, our mother, our sister, our children. I mean, uh, daughters. They were those are I mean, uh, female uh, females at our house. same way the same sort of a treatment should be given to your office colleagues also and female office colleagues so you should not indulge in passing on any uh, unparliamentary language nasty language or try to spread some rumor against them and uh, suppose if any person is caught on this particular issue no definitely management is taking very strict action against them and even i have found some of the employees have been uh, dismissed from the services of the organization see now we are uh, coming to a general sir, sir, topic sir one minute sir one minute yes. uh, who are the committee members of this sexual harassment committee so that is been formed that is been formed by the company so it depends from ro to ro ha 
we are all officers only when one employee is definitely a lady employee lady employee but one from personal department also one male see, that is see that is why i'm telling you so they first decide i mean which committee has to i mean the committee should be consisting of who see it may so happen that you are you i mean they would like to include you but if you decline that offer then they have to approach some people like that but one committee member has to be necessarily a lady okay, okay. but uh, outside ngo huh NGO, see, NGO member. See, normally this is an in-house committee, so therefore we don't try to bring someone from outside, because we know uh, the working of the organization. If some, uh, if if a person is not familiar with our rules and regulation, it may so happen that I have, uh, I mean, being a lady officer, someone has told me to go, uh, I mean, do this work in this way and that way. That way, which is not according to the prescribed uh, rules of the organization, and that time that uh, that uh, person, knowingly or unknowingly, must have uttered some unparliamentary words or language. Okay, sir. And see, there is no bar that I mean, there should not be any uh, person from uh, from uh, NGO or a legal or legal background that can be also included. But normally we give preference to our employees only, our officers. Okay. Yes. Now we are coming to general topic. So any question on this, right? From I mean, what are CDA rules? What is major penalty, minor penalty? Sir, so you want to discuss the citation? Sir, rule twenty-one and uh, rule thirty. Ah. Uh, 29 and 30? Yeah. What citation you want? Uh, you told me that uh, you must uh, I should remind, uh, remind you for uh, giving some... No, not uh, about that 29 and 30. You uh, you were interested in knowing number 23. 23. Yes, that I will give you. Know, that I have got in mind. Don't worry. Because still my uh, this presentation is to get over. Okay. So now pension rules. Those who are uh, covered under pension rule. So one important rule is pension is subject to good conduct. Even after you are retired, you must uh, must be your conduct must be good. Now supposing our uh, post retirement, if you have been convicted, that means jail me gay. So then uh, the appropriate authority can withdraw or withhold pension or part there. My totally pension can be stopped. Or part thereof can be stopped. Now, guilty of misconduct, you are guilty of no misconduct under Rule 43. See, before our retirement, supposing if you are joined in 2000, say, uh, sorry, 1970, uh, 1980, and you retired recently, but before uh, you, you are committed one misconduct in 1981, and that was that came to surface in 2019, believe. So it is already more than uh, 38 years old. But since you are in the service and that misconduct was noticed by the management, they can take action against your retirement by issue of a charge. But what happens when a person retires from the services and some misconduct which he has committed is known to the management? So that time, the, there is a clause that that cause of action which has arisen should not be four years before initiating any action. Now, assuming the one person has retired, uh, I said, four years before, 2019. 2019, first of November, he retired. 2000, uh, 2019, first of November, he retired. And his case was noticed on 22nd uh, of November 2023, whether action can be taken against him. Whether action can be taken against him. No, sir. No, sir. Why? It's already because the years. cause of action which has been noticed by you is more than four years old. It is not that any, uh, any the management can take action till he completes four years after, he, after his retirement. It's not like that. Four years, the first day will be counted from the date on which they have committed a misconduct. 
Understood? Yes. Yeah. 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 Now, suppose if the case is going against an employee, the decision of the disciplinary authority is not. So that time he will continue to get the provisional pension. What is provisional pension? Provisional pension is nothing but the full pension what he will be entitled to after his retirement. Because he will not be allowed to go for commutation. So commutation will not be uh, permissible. So instead of getting 30,000, see, supposing, assuming his basic was 40,000, his basic pension comes to 40,000 rupees, he is allowed to go for one third. The, assuming that it was 30,000, so one third means 10,000 rupees he could have committed, but he will not be allowed to commit that. Instead, he will get uh, entire pension, which will be a provisional pension. Now, if he has been found guilty, gratuity in company's contribution towards PF is not payable, but entitlement of leave is paid. He has been found guilty, so he will not be entitled to get the gratuity. He will not be entitled to uh, get the com uh, company's contribution towards PF if he has opted for uh, controversy PF. Only PF own contribution and VPF is payable. Supposing uh, his uh, uh, PF is own contribution and voluntary provident fund is also his money, uh, his own contribution. So this PF and v VPF cannot be attached by a decree of any court, tribunal or forum. You might, uh, keep it in mind. Even if uh, he has been uh, convicted by the court's order, then also he is entitled to get his PF contribution. And, uh, are you aware that uh, we are supposed to submit our property return? That is under rules uh, 16A. Because uh, there is a section that when you are supposed to submit your property return. So that is always submitted before 30, uh, 30th April of every year. Why 30th April of every year? Because, because the financial uh, year starts from 1st of uh, March and it ends on, uh, sorry, 1st of April it starts, ends on 30th of March. So you get one month buffer time to submit your property. Okay. Are you aware about Central Vigilance Commission? So Central Vigilance Commission is a, commi uh, the commission form under the aegis of Ministry of the uh, Ministry of Finance. And all vigilance departments, uh, CVO, that is Chief Vigilance Officers are reporting to C uh, CVC, that is Central Vigilance Commission. And the cases mainly dealt with by them are only the officer which belongs to the cater of five, that is chief manager. See, for uh, uh, class one, two, three, four, so the competent, uh, the uh, chief vigilance officer is the officer who decides uh, to initiate action against such employees. But if an action has to be initiated or any action has to be taken against the chief manager and avocator, that is chief manager, deputy manager, deputy general manager, general manager, CMT, so naturally this will go to CVC for seeking their concurrence. That is central vigilance coverage. Now CBI's role. Now this is called sanction for prosecution. I have already explained it to you before even a case against a publisher that is us is being investigated by the CPI. Then also disciplinary authorities concurrence is required. Now assuming the concurrence was given to investigate the case and the case has come up wherein the role of the ring official has been identified and it proves that they were involved in either detriment of a wrong claim or passing of undue un benefit to others. Then, the report will be submitted to our organization by CBI. There, the disciplinary authority will decide whether the misconduct or the charges leveled against them are correct are correct or it is within the uh, or it is violation of our CDA rules. 
then only they will give an uh, sanction for prosecution. I will give you an example. Now, I think if you are settling a motor claim on the basis, uh, on what basis settle the motor claim? On the basis of on what basis? Yeah. What papers? Related to the motor. What language. papers? Huh? What papers? RCA, DL, permit, R fitness. Ah, yes, DL, permit. And what is most important? Claim form. FRI. Survey report. Survey report is important. And with, with the Estimate. survey report, bill. There, has, bill. there has to be some bills. Bills of, repairs, bills of spare parts. Okay. Now you tell me if a claim has been settled by you. Settled by you. And subsequently the complaint was made with the CBI. And CBI uh, has come to the conclusion that the garage was not existing. The spare part shop is not in existence. The, where the repairs have been carried is also a fictitious address. So whether the claim was settled properly or not. Whether the claim was settled properly or not. Properly there, are opinions, uh, claim huh? it, uh, there are two opinions. Because it's based on the uh, report, uh, survey, be, uh, believing on the survey correct. report. What you are saying is correct. See, because in our claim procedure manual or the rules issued from time to time, we have been never instructed to see the existence of a garage, to check the uh, veracity of the bill submitted by the uh, client. So that is the role of the Surveyor. role of whom surveyor. So based on their document only we recommend process and to settle the claim. So we are not at fault. So in such a case, in one of the cases, yeah. so CBI were uh, CBI were forcing us to submit our uh, concurrence. So that time we defer with the with. Uh, with the CBI's advice saying that uh, yes, the claim is fraudulent, but our company, our employees have not played any role because as per our rules, we are not supposed to go to check whether the uh, garage is in existence, whether the shop is in existence, whether the repairs were carried out or not. That is the job of the surveyor for whom we are paying the survey fees. And supposing if it is made mandatory for our employees to go and check, so I don't think, I mean, we will be able to adhere to the tax in settlement of the claim. Or supposing if I am settling a claim in Pune and the policy belongs to uh, Kerala where the vehicle has been referred, do you mean to say that I should go from here to Kerala to verify the uh, existence of garage and all? So accordingly, we took a decision not to give sanction for prosecution. So there was a difference between uh, our opinion and the role uh, and the opinion of the disciplinary authority. So in such case, the matter is placed before CVC for taking their final decision, which becomes binding on both the parties. Okay. So before before according sanction for prosecution, you must look into the various aspects of the claim and determine whether our employees was were at fault. And if it is there, then only you should hand over such cases to CBI for going for the prosecution. Yes. Any question? Uh -huh. so, in this example, you have cited whether the action shall be taken against the surveyor who has defaulted or who definitely, has defaulted. Definitely, survey is a, uh, is a private employee, so CBI can prosecute him. Because anyway, the, uh, see, I would like to tell you, any. I would like to further clarify you that in the, this case, now I was made a liaison officer between CBI and CVC, so I personally visited uh, CVC office in New Delhi. There we had a discussion across the table. So I was placing my points in favor of the employees and they were against. But finally, CVC come to the conclusion that yes, these people are not at fault. At the most, they can be tried under, uh, under our CDA rules. So uh, they were uh, let off or they were saved from the uh, prosecution. But that time, CVC said that the main culprit in these cases are uh, surveyors. Then surveyors were tried under this uh, particular uh, episode of financial fraud. And uh, I, I've been given to understand that the, they, they are undergoing some sort of a rigorous imprisonment also. So that is there. So that can uh, that can take place. Okay. Yes. Sir. Any question on this? No question. No question. No question.
Now, earlier you must be knowing those who are uh, seniors. They must be knowing that the person against whom the charge sheet were issued and they were finalized, they were not getting any sort of a promotion subsequently because every time uh, people used to say, Kare, he had done this sort of a misconduct some 10 years back. That is why he was not uh, getting promotion. And that was the fact. So once this matter was being discussed, so I was also part of this uh, discussion with our CEO. That time she was saying that some of the employees have expired also and still we have not come to the conclusion that what action has to be taken against them and all. So subsequently there was a joint meeting of all the subsidiaries. That time CEO represented our, our uh, company. And that time it was decided that the, even if a person has committed a misconduct, but there is there's n number of years passed and he has reformed himself. That uh, reformed himself means he is showing good work, he is uh, working excellently, he is showing uh, good results in development and all. But, st uh, but still because of that stigma what he is carrying for having a uh, vigilance case against him, he is not getting promotion. So that time the management come with this particular circular which is called rigor effect. Now, if a, pen, if a major penalty has been imposed on any of the employees, he will not get promotion for two years from the date of imposition of that penalty. Now, supposing in 21, he has been imposed a penalty. So, 21 and 22, he will not get the promotion. And third exercise, he will be eligible to get the promotion. Same way, if minor penalty has been imposed, he will not get promotion for one year from the date of imposition of that penalty. But supposing if a penalty of censure has been imposed, so I already <laughs> told you, censure is nothing but a recorded warning. But for that, charge sheet is a uh, uh, must. So the moment his uh, censure order has been issued, if the uh, promotion are being declared tomorrow, he can get the promotion. Any question on this? No. I have a question, sir. Yeah, yeah. Suppose, uh, uh, suppose the employee is found guilty. Uh, so suppose the uh, employee has made a financial uh, misappropriation, but okay. till that period of time he has not issued any charge sheet. No inquiry has been. Pardon, pardon. No yeah, the employee has, has not. Been, no, no, the employee has not been. The employee has conduct. Employee has done financial misappropriation with the company. Say, Correct. Uh, Correct. Uh, but uh, uh, actual CD inquiry has not been uh, started. Yeah. No notice has been issued to him. No charge yes, was correct. given. And that I'm, I'm covering that I'm covering in said envelope. That I'm covering in said envelope. That is the next. Uh, I mean, you will find it the next slides. Password, you know what is password. I need not speak more on this. Achha, uh, I will answer your question. That time we'll uh, not talk on that seal analog. Rightly, what he said, the person has committed a misconduct, but still the charge sheet has not been issued. See, you are saying the charge sheet has not been issued. Yes. Charge sheet has not Then he can not, be considered for given, given a promotion. Unless and until the charge sheet is issued, there cannot be a remark from the vigilance department that disciplinary proceedings are pending against him. So but he, he is entitled to get the problem. But vigilance if the disciplinary ah, but the no no vigilance inquiry means not by appointing IO and PO. Investigation yeah, has yeah, been done. Yeah. Investigation yes. has been done, but the, there is no further communication about the action to be taken against him by way of issuing major or minor penalty charge sheet. So yes. unless and until charge sheet is uh, not issued. Uh, see, if the charge sheet is not issued, then that employee is entitled to get the promotion. Because the, we cannot say that uh, there is a case against him. Because no charge sheet is issued. But if the charge sheet is issued and you don't know the, what will be the outcome of that. So that time his name will be considered for promotion. Likewise, if he has uh, his uh, qualification marks are there, his... Uh, service marks are there, then his uh, CIRs marks are there, everything. So that uh, promotion list will be prepared in the uh, descending order. The topmost will be on the top and assuming that this person has got 90 marks and he is placed, as, placed at ranking list number 6. So he will be uh, placed at number 6 but his name will be not disclosed. It will be disclosed that it is in sealed envelope. 
Only after after the disciplinary action is over and he is found not guilty, that time his envelope will be opened and he will be declared pro promoted. He will, he will be, be given after benefits from the data. Uh, ah, that, that's what that's what I'm saying. Now, so far as <laughs> the moment is uh, is uh, envelope is uh, open, so he will be declared promoted. But he will be declared pro uh, promoted from the date on which the other officers have taken the charge. Okay. Okay. That is the common date nowadays they are giving to take the charge. So he will be treated as if as if he was promoted and on that day. But he will be taking physical charge of that promoted cadre now. Therefore, he will not um, see when he takes, uh, actually he has he is declared to have taken promote. Uh, have been promoted from the date on which the other officers have taken the charge. So on that particular day, he will get an opportunity to get the notional fiction, fixation. Now, supposing his basic salary was 10,000 and 5,000 rupees extra, that he will be declared, I mean, he will be fixed at 15,000 rupees. But till the time he has, uh, he has not taken the charge, that period he will be getting the salary uh, at the basic of 10,000 rupees because he has not performed the duties in the promoted cadre. But the day he takes charge, so from that day he will get 15,000. But next increment, supposing if he has opted from the date of taking charge in the promoted cadre, that will be his next date of. Yes. Sir, yes, uh, is you... there any refer is there any refer suppose the employee has given uh, the promotion and if it is found uh -huh. guilty then uh, will it be reverted back? No, no, he will not be because that no. that has come but, uh, to the notice of the management subsequent to declaration of penalty. Uh, suppose the employee has admitted his guilt and uh, no action has been till date is has been taken. Whether it will be considered for the zone of consideration. That is why I am telling you, now to qualify to get a promotion or to be considered for promotion, there is one uh, one reason or uh, one point is explained. Can we? There should not have been any charge sheet issued to him charge before sheet. declaration. It should be charge sheet first. Uh, charge sheet is a must. Okay, sir. How many days are required to be completed in the promoted cadre to get all the benefits in the promotion? Immediately, see, supposing. No, sir. I he, just, uh, I, somewhere I heard that uh, suppose the person who is going to retire in the next year, but suppose uh, in the promotion he has completed only six months, will he be uh, entitled to get all the promotional benefit of the next cadre? Of course, or definitely he that? will get because he I, will be retiring as a promoted cadre only. Promoted cadre. No, but uh, it is required to serve at least 10 months in the cadre. No, no, that is for calculation of pension. See, that, 10 months that means what? See, your uh, pension is calculated on the basis of the average pension, uh, average basic you have done during the last 10 months of your before retirement. Months, yes. Now, here in this case, assuming that he was promoted uh, for last six months. So, six months, yes. his basic say is 10,000 rupees. And yes. earlier it was, say, uh, uh, 10,000. So, 10,000 plus 20,000, that will be 30,000 divided by 10. So, it will come to be uh, that will be his basic pension that means uh, it means that uh, to get all the benefits of that promoted cadre no pension you say only pension pension yeah, pension, pension. Uh, pension full pension if you want to get your basic for last year uh, last 10 months should be equal so it should equal. be the same basic okay 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 yeah password i have told you now now procedure for imposing minor pension Procedure kya hai? See, now, normally they will give in a, the sequence will be in, not in order. They will say, ka, please, uh, whether the sequence is correct. So that is why I'm telling you minor penalty, the sequence is, first you need to investigate the matter. That is the CEO, Vivo will investigate the matter. Based on that, charge sheet is a must to be issued before imposing a minor penalty. And in this charge sheet, you will be required to give your explanation. The explanation in the sense that your written statement of defense, that your rebuttal against the charges leveled against. But here there won't be any dis uh, domestic inquiry. Based on your statement or explanation, the disciplinary authority will decide to impose the penalty as specified under Rule 23A2D. Okay.
So you, I have already made it very clear to you uh, when we, I was talking to you about minor penalty and major. And similarly in major penalty, First, investigation will be there. Then issue of charge sheet. This is also common. Here, written statement of defense will be there. But after written statement of defense, there will be a domestic inquiry instituted against that employee by appointing inquiry officer and presenting officer. Then inquiry officer will submit his uh, report. And based on that report, the disciplinary authority will decide the quantum of punishment to be meted out to that particular employee and accordingly the office order imposing the penalty will be issued. So here what is the difference between this the, the minor penalty there won't be any inquiry. Here it will be inquiry and submission of uh, inquiry report and finally imposition of penalty. So here only two steps are more that is appointment of IOPO and submission of inquiry. You understood? Mm -hmm. Now, inquiry proceedings, it is judicial proceeding and quasi judicial proceedings. What is the difference? Judicial proceedings, may, what happens? Now, supposing if, uh, in judicial proceeding, you will need to prove all sort of uh, questions or you will have to address all sort of questions. Supposing if a person has been murdered and his case is going in judicial, uh, before the judicial ma magistrate, so you will require to prove who has been murdered, who has murdered him, what weapon has been used, what metal, which metal the, that weapon was made of, which metal, then uh, from which side of the body he stabbed him, whether that uh, dragger or the knife was in right hand or left hand, whether there was light or in, uh, or light or dark, then uh, on which side of the road I, or in home uh, he was murdered. Then, and who has seen, from which distance they have seen, n number of questions you will be required to ask. That means in judicial proceeding, the stand of, uh, standard of proof required is beyond reasonable doubt. And there could not be any doubt raised on uh, for proving that charge. But in quasi-judicial proceedings, the standard of proof is required is that of preponderance of probabilities. What is preponderance of probabilities? That means it is likely the uh, supposing there are 20 questions out of that 15 questions says the answer says that this person is important. I, I will give you a sm small example. Uh, earlier we used to issue cover notes. Are you aware of it? Are you aware that we were issuing cover notes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, cover notes were being issued. So that time the procedure was that the development officer, we were issuing cover note to development officer for that one issue register was being maintained. Uh, cover note book number containing cover note number so to so, uh, depicting the number of cover notes issued or handed over to development officer for his use was being recorded. Now, assuming that the cover note book was having 25 cover note, out of which one cover note was stolen from that, and there is a third party uh, claim lodged on that. So who who you are going to hold responsible? Who will be held responsible? Because that, that cover note is neither the cover note has neither been signed by him nor written by him. So to whom you are going to implicate? or hold responsible and why i have already told you he has not uh, i mean uh, filled in that uh, cover note he has neither signed this it has been signed by some fictitious person by uh, giving the particulars of the vehicle that has been insured whom you are going to blame for this development officer i give any answer Development of the for what? Huh? Because hey, your answer is correct, but I know want to know the reason. Cover note is issued huh? to him and his primary responsible for that cover note. Huh, his primary responsible because he has failed to, to, I mean, he has failed to ensure safe custody of the cover note. And he has not even bothered to check whether the one particular cover note which was stolen from the entire book. 
has been misused and he has not, neither informed the office nor to his superior. And that governor, though it has been issued under the signatory of an unauthorized signator, signatory, and the premium has not been received, so he will be held responsible. So holding him responsible is correct or wrong, you tell. You may answer, na. Hey, holding him responsible for misuse of that government by somebody else is correct or not? Wrong. No, why it is wrong? It is right, why it sir. Is wrong. He is under control. It of is right society. because he has failed to protect. Notice this. Okay. So, quasi judicial proceeding and Sorry, judicial proceeding and quasi judicial proceeding. The so standard of proof required in judicial proceeding is the proof which is beyond reasonable doubt. And here we go according to preponderance of problem. In domestic inquiry, the judge is inquiry officer. Public prosecutor's work is being done here by presenting officer. Accused is charged employee and defending advocate in court. That role is being uh, performed here by defense assessment. So, judge can be inquiry officer, but the final decision of imposing the penalty is disciplinary authority. So, you can, supposing if the question is asked this way, so you can say inquiry officer, but if it is asked whether disciplinary authority is a judge, then also it is correct. You understood this? Court may carry that. Any, our inquiry officer job is to work as a judge which is being done in the court. Then our presenting officer does the work of a public prosecutor as is being done in court. Then accused is our charged employee. Then defending advocate. Your court may defending advocate. So then we have got a provision to provide a defense assistant to defend the case on behalf of the employee. Now, this is also one rule. <laughs> Okay. So, so there is a provision of rule number 39. Sometimes what happens, you must have also experienced. Okay, uh, I've already told you that okay, for one particular set of a misconduct, a person was imposed with a penalty of reduction in his basic salary by six stages. Whereas the other person was imposed with a penalty of uh, reduction in basic salary by three stages. किसी आदमी को छह इंक्रीमेंट कर दिया और किसी को तीन इंक्रीमेंट किया वे जब एक्चुअली मिसकंडक्ट वाज ऑफ सिमिलर नेचर अरे वो अनस्टेबल झाला पर है तो इंटरनेट कनेक्शन इज अनस्टेबल कैन यू हियर मी हेलो यस यस सर यस 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 सो व्हाट आई एम सेइंग द व्हाई देयर इज द दैट इज अ डिस्क्रिमिनेशन that you called a discrimination because one person for the misconduct has been imposed with a penalty of decrement by six stages and the other one by three stages. So in order to control this, there is rule number 39 that is called review. And even if no appeal is made, the appellate authority on its own can call for the papers and see if the penalty is in commensurate with the nature of misconduct. मंजे चाचा इसके लिए आपको अपील करने की जरूरत नहीं है अपील नहीं भी किया तो अगर सपोजिंग एपेलेट अथॉरिटी को मालूम पड़ता है कि अरे दो केस में इन लोग ने डिफरेंस किया एक को 6 इंक्रीमेंट किया एक को 3 इंक्रीमेंट तो वो पेपर्स उसका मांगा के खुद उस पे डिसीजन ले सकते हैं उसमें भी वो पेनल्टी बढ़ा सकते हैं कम कर सकते हैं या एक्सोनरेट कर सकते हैं लेकिन एनहांसमेंट करने के पहले उनको यानी बिफोर एनहांसिंग दिस पेनल्टी दे विल रिक्वायर टू गिव एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू द कंसर्न एम्प्लॉय to make his uh, representation. So what is rule number 13? And review is made by the appellate authority on his own. Okay. Any question on this? Any question on this? No, sir. 
ओके ये परत ये होता पुढे पुढे जात नाही हे करू एंटर करू वन मिनिट हा नाव आफ्टर द इन्क्वायरी रिपोर्ट इज रिसिव्हड then disciplinary authority's role is to see whether the decision arrived by the inquiry officer is correct or not if they say it is correct then they will show agreement with the findings of inquiry officer and if they disagree they will show they will show disagreement with the final, uh, findings of inquiry officer and even they can squash this squash this inquiry and appoint a new inquiry officer and fresh uh, or or presenting officer to commence the inquiry afresh so agar disciplinary authority ka role hai inquiry officer ne report dene ke baad mein they can agree with the findings they can disagree with the findings or they will quash uh, this inquiry and order a fresh inquiry any question on this no, any sir. question on this no 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 not sir <coughs> Now, up till now, whatever we have discussed, if you have any query, you can discuss with me because now we'll be going to a session which will be on questions and answer, and uh, all of you one by one will be required to answer it. Ba 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 ba. Pardon. Uh, sir, sir. Uh, yeah. If uh, development officers uh, forgot to deposit the premium amount by cash. Yeah. uh of miss he deposited the amount after one week what will you yeah. call us ha huh. so that will be temporary misappropriation of claim the yeah, temporary misappropriation of the premium and in between supposing if there is a loss to the final, uh, loss to the company arising out of issue of that policy ha huh. so he will be held responsible okay sir see how do you come to know the whether he that he has received the premium some 7 days back sometimes uh, if he receives uh, by check then check uh, yeah. date, date is written no, on that ha uh, yeah so you mean to say that the check and also it will be late deposit but the thing is that in such case only if the claim is uh, is arisen out of uh, receipt of that premium check then action will be taken and suppose if there is no uh, uh, no financial loss cost to the company but still management if they want they can initiate action against him uh, under minor penalty ha uh, sir because this cases happened during that corona period ha uh, yeah so that time some other administrative instructions were there uh, they could have informed the office by, by... Be, sir but there See, is a violation of yeah, uh, vidula you are on uh, You are there, na? Vidula. I'm there. Ah, ah. Yeah. So you I'm... can explain because you were working in accounts department during the period of COVID. Uh huh. How the treatment of premium of check was being accounted? Me that time, uh, any bank, any branch in the Axis Bank, if Axis Bank is there, any branch in the Axis Bank, they can deposit the check and give us scan copy of the same. Okay, deposited in the Correct. bank. so there is no problem i'm supposing of... if then mm -hmm. i suppose if they fail to deposit nahi uh, many times they are depositing we have no case then, of supposing it. if they have we take an hypothetical exam, example no, that no, one day okay. one develop hmm hmm hello hello हेलो आउट ऑफ नेटवर्क चले गए जी हेलो इज इन नॉट अंडर कनेक्शन हेलो सर
Can you hear me? No, sir. Yes. It is yes, audible yes, now. Sir, yes. Audible. Okay. It is audible now. Audible. So, uh, any question? Any question or doubts? Any question or doubts? No. No, sir. No. Achha. So, now we will go to a questioner. I mean, uh, on similar lines, you may be answering question in exams. So, what I feel, feel now, can we, uh, I don't know who are all attending except the people, I mean, the official's name which is appearing on the screen. But I feel that I expect that every one of us who is attending this training program need to answer at least one question. Find the odd. Um, okay. So now question answer. Find the odd one out in respect of misconduct of an employee. First, it taking or giving bribe or in any illegal gratification, acting in a manner prejudicial to the interest of the organization, honesty and hard work. Three. Honesty and, and hard, hard work. Third word. Correct. Mm -hmm. Now, some other person should try this. Charges proved against a suspended employee. Okay. What okay. will be recoverable? 50% of what he was paid. 20% of what he was paid, entire subsistence allowance paid, nothing, nothing, is, nothing is recoverable. Nothing, nothing is recoverable. Nothing is recoverable. Nothing is recoverable. Of suspension, whatever has been, amount has been given to him, even though if he is declared guilty, nothing will be recoverable. An assistant can be placed under suspension by head of the department, disciplinary authority, appointing authority, all of the above. All of the above. Yes, but, ha, but head of the department has also got the authority. Because all of see, the above. Ha, all, mm -hmm. all of the above is correct, but when an assistant uh, makes any sort of a, uh, commits any sort of a misconduct, the first person to know about his misconduct is head of the department. Okay. Now, supposing in, or, in order to, I mean, uh, this head of, head of the department doesn't want to have some sort of an anonymity with that person or doesn't want to create some sort of a fear, so then he can definitely approach the higher offices. So there, the disciplinary authority, appointing authority, or anyone can place him under suspension. But the ideal answer is head of the department. Now, appeal must be submitted within one, one month from receipt of penalty order, three months or six months. Three months. Three How months. Much? Three months. Three, so three months. months is from the date of receipt of, of order. Receipt of the order. Not three months from the date of uh, passing of the office. Now, which statement is correct? Is incorrect. incorrect. Uh, disciplinary proceedings are quasi judicial in nature. Disciplinary authority can decide the quantum of punishment to charge officials. There is no need to uh, provide full opportunity to charge officials to de uh, defend his case. Please. The department has Please. to be completed within the ambit of the Third. Third, one. Third one is incorrect. Incorrect. Correct. I mean, you need to provide opportunity. All yeah. sort of ah, yeah, opportunity to charge employee to defend his case. Which of the following is not misconduct? Causing uh, causing uh, deliberate damage to the company's property. Absence from employees appointed place of work without permission or sufficient commission of any act amounting to four. Four. Absence four. from four. duty for one day without permissions. We have already four. said four. The, uh, that came in. You uh, though we don't have a right to claim the leave, but there is an exception that one person, a person or an official can remain absent from the office for one day without. Any permission. Now, causing deliberate damage to company's property, if uh, we say that this is not misconduct, then everybody will start breaking the <laughs> office premises. <laughs> uh, and uh, people will move from this place to that place. Then even more, I mean, criminal, they will uh, commit criminal uh, misconduct. Okay, next. Yeah, so that is.
which of the following is not missed? Providing discount to a client based on claims. Which of the following is not a misconduct? Providing no, discount. the following is not a misconduct. Providing discount to client based on claims. Smoking in the office, neglect of work or negligence in performing duties, drunken or rioters behavior in the office premises or outside gambling within the office premises. Number one. Four. Number one. Huh? Number one. one. Which one? one. Fourth one, who was providing, saying? Providing discount on client based on client experience. See, I will give you an example of second uh, second option what has been given to you. See, in our Pune regional office, Bidula must be knowing, there was one board place or one notice mm -hmm. place. It was written, this is a smoke-free zone. So one of the employees mm -hmm. came and told me, Are, we can freely smoke here or what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, they interpret, uh, interpret the meaning in a different way. Mm. So, the correct answer is? Providing discount. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Statements are correct. Suspended. Statements are correct. Suspended employee can gainfully employ himself during the period of suspension. He can work in different office of the company. He cannot be wait daughter without permission of the office. Before release, he is required to give declaration that during the period of suspension he was not employed. So this is a question and an explanation from me also. So you can say. Answer is three, sir. He cannot oh, get without permission. He cannot work in different office without permission of the office. Then he cannot leave headquarters without permission of the office. Correct. Then Achha, which of the following statement? Even the fourth one. Ah, yeah. Fourth one is also that. See, whenever a person is placed under suspension, we before leasing his uh, subsistence allowance, we need to take a Declaration from him that during this period of suspension, that is for this particular month, he was he has not led quarter without permission of the office. That he during this period of suspension, he is not fully employed. So, so here the answers are these. These are the answers. Hmm? Huh? Three and four. These are correct. Huh, these are correct. He can he cannot work in different offices. Then he cannot himself uh, get himself employed gain, gain fully during the period of uh, suspension anywhere. Next. Prima facie, there is regulatory restriction. The disciplinary has to decide whether prima facie there is evidence to show misconduct on the part of the employee, whether the misconduct is major or minor nature, whether there is sufficient evidence to sustain the charges. Now, disciplinary oh. authority wants to initiate any action. So, what he has to decide? Sir, all the... All of the... All of the... All of the all. He will have to decide whether there is a, there is a substantial event, evidence to prove that there was a... Uh, uh, that the employee has committed some sort of a misconduct. Misconduct. Then, he has to decide whether this, of, this is of major or minor. Or then finally, he has to decide whether we have got sufficient evidence to prove the allegation against the charge uh, against the employee. So here hmm. the question is: the kind all of, of the above. All of the above. All of the above. Now, essence of ideal inquiry proceeding does not include fair and impartial trial, assessment evidence, timely completion of inquiry, and business procured by the charge. Business procured by the charged official. Uh, why? Because if, uh, uh, supposing, uh, because if we consider this, this thing, then our development officer will take a plea that we have uh, procured a premium of 5 crores, 6 crores. Every year we are showing our accretion, so no action should be taken again, even if you are intelling in sort of a misconduct involving huge loss to the company. Therefore, the correct answer is business procured by the charge. The penalty is decided by the disciplinary authority based on which of the following factors, degree of cooperation in the inquiry, past misconduct, proof, sole or common misconduct, veteran effect, all of the above. All of the above. Hmm. All of the above. Huh? All of the above. Yes. 
See, degree of cooperation means what happens now. Supposing if he has been called for the inquiry and he admits the charges in the first inquiry, first uh, date of hearing only. That means he is saving a lot of time of the management, uh, including the money involved. Now, supposing if they are appointing inquiry officer and the inquiry officer uh, comes and his expenses, are, his conveyance are 500 rupees per day and that inquiry was likely to take for more than 20 days. So, definitely there is a saving of 10,000 10, rupees. Same way, the, of, uh, the office work is hampered because the development, because the charged employee is an employee by... Uh, but PO is also an employee and if IO happens to be an employee also, then also their time is consumed in this work. Therefore, that is to be taken into consideration. Past misconduct proof. Now, supposing if there was a charge sheet issued in, in the past against an employee who has committed a fraud of misappropriation and second time also he has uh, committed. So, that time we'll need to see whether the... the in the past also he was imposed with this penalty so there is no need of taking uh, no need of doing any sort of a leniency to him and the penalty can be given to of a grave, uh, grave in nature now sole or common misconduct sole or common misconduct means what happens now some people they form a group to commit a misconduct where there is a conspiracy hatched between these people so their common misconduct was uh, with the what do you call that? I mean, with an intention of gaining some sort of a financial gain to themselves. So there also the uh, penalty can be decided looking into their sole or common misconduct. Now deterrent effect. Now assuming a one person has misappropriated a premium of say fifty lakhs, seventy lakhs, one crore rupees, and you are you are uh, you are imposing a penalty of reduction to different rank. Whether that will be giving a good signal to the employees of the organization? No. No. Because they, no. what they will say, Nare, ek rupya to meko nika, meko company to rakha to hai. I will still continue okay. to get the salary till, till, my, uh, till my retirement. Therefore, it should be having a different effect. So instead of uh, reducing their basic salary or demoting them to some different position, if they are in, they are imposed with the penalty of dismissal, that will send a, show, a shock wave amongst all the employees. Is it correct or not? Yes. Yeah. So that should have yes. a. So all of the above is the correct. If charge sheet, uh, if charge official demand listed document for submitting his reply, it should be given. It should not be given at this stage. It, it depends upon the discretion of IO or it depends upon the discretion of PO. See, whenever charge sheet is issued, major penalty charge sheet is issued. So we give list of the witnesses on we on which we are relied to. Through the charges. Same way we give list of different, uh, documents on which we rely to substantiate the charges against the employee. And he wants to make a represent, uh, submit his explanation, but for that he needs the copies of the documents which has been listed in our charge state. So whether that should be given at the before submission of his reply. It should be given. Uh, it no, should be given. Actually, it should not be, given. In, at this in all organization, it is given along with the charge sheet. But in our organization, there is a specific rule which says that it should not be given at this stage. Because at this stage, he is uh, only required to say whether he admits or denies the charge. And the documents are given to them, uh, given to such employee at the time of presentation. So it should not be given at this stage. That is the, I told you, this is as per our syllabus. Now, which authority is competent to review and pass order issue and look into order issued by the disciplinary or if, even if no appeal is made against the said, uh, said, uh, Four. said appellate authority. Yes, correct. Appellate, appellate authority. authority. Disciplinary authority will never review because he is the person who has made the order. And that order requires some sort of a scrutiny. Then chief vigilance officer is the last. He will never sign a, a penalty order because he doesn't have any authority. GMP, he can sign provided he is a disciplinary authority or if he is an uh, appellate authority. But the, the correct answer is appellate Hello. authority in the particular case. What is not provided in CDA rules of the company? Appointment of inquiry officer, then appeal to the appellate authority, memorial to general manager or memorial. Three. 
सिंगल एंटिटी बाय न्यू डे अशोर कंपनी इन दर टू थाउजेंड An employee is deemed to have abandoned his post if he remains absent unauthorized for a period of ninety days. Ninety days. Not thirty days, madam. Ninety days. Otherwise, you will be required to terminate n number of people from the office. Ninety days. Okay. An employee under suspension is entitled for leaving alone. Subsistence allowance. Subsistence allowance. Subsistence allowance. CVC guidelines stipulates rules for acquiring office premises on lease purchase as under. See, I will explain it to you. Now, whenever we want to acquire premises on lease or purchase, as per CVC's direction, we need to obtain bids. Then we need to obtain bids that is technical bid and financial bid. Okay. So oh, here yeah. the answer you may be knowing, but what is technical bid and what is financial bid? Do you know that? Now you have received two bids. Technical bid is separate and financial bid is separate. So first, which bid, uh, bid you are going to open? Technical bid. Technical. Technical. Uh, technical why bid. technical bid? Because you will be knowing the expertise of that person to whom we are going to hand over the contract. Now we were uh, we have received some ten uh, technical bids. Ten technical bids. Out of that, three we have rejected because they do not possess the required qualification or technical expertise in executing that particular contract. So now there are ten final, ten technical bids and ten financial bids. So which bids you are going to open now? Fine, technical bid. No technical bids. We have opened. There were ten technical bids. Out of that, two we have disqualified. Now financial bids we have got ten. So how many technical uh, financial bids you are going to open? Seven. Eight. 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 Uh, Eight. Whatever. I mean those who have been uh, those uh, those been, uh, those bidders whose technical bids were disqualified for their financial bid open. we are not going to open. But we are going to open for remaining eight bank. or seven whatever. So both one and two. So guidelines stipulates bids for acquiring office premises on lease. That is technical bid and financial. CDA rules are not applicable to class one officer, class three and four employees, class one officer and operation from four. Number three. 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 Not four. Four is our employee, madam. So and supposing <laughs> class one officer who are on deputation from other government sector, if they commit any misconduct, so how they are going to be tried? नंबर premises in head office and if we are if they are carrying some sort of a uh, uh, renovation work and that is running in uh, crores of rupees i many more than the threshold value value and as per cvc's guideline one committee which is working under the aegis of central vigilance commission they visit us and they look into the uh, process what is being forward first what they will say that whether we have issued the tender notice properly it was it was uh, circulated in a broader sense that is all newspaper then national newspaper on company's website on company's notice board then they will say whether the specification what is given in the tender form are being implemented in the while executing the supposing they have given some sort of a uh, uh, some quality of paper to be used whether the paper is being used and when the payment has been resume uh, release supposing if they have completed 25% of the the work so only 25% of the payment has been uh, released 
or it has been more than 25%, whether the amount to take care of any damages which we will which we'll notice in future has for that deduction has been made or not. So that is Chief Technical Examin Examiner's organization which uh, works under the aegis of Central Vigilance Commission. Yes. Common proceeding against two or more employees are per permissible under rule. We have already 29. discussed 29. 20, 29. Now CVC stands for what? Central, Central Vigilance, Vigilance Commission. Commission. Huh? Two, two. Chief Vigilance, Central Vigilance Commission, three. That is three. Central Vigilance Commission. Commission, The dismissal order can be issued by office in charge, competent authority for imposing major penalty, appellate appointing authority. Appointing authority. Even though if the charge sheet has been issued under the signature of a disciplinary authority as per the schedule given by the company, but his appointment has to, but is he has to be issued with a major major penalty uh, penalty of dismissal order. Then you need to ensure that it is not signed below the rank of the appointing authority. So appointing authority is correct. Substances alone can be increased to seventy five percent three months of, of suspension, six months of six months of six months of suspension. When but when. When the delay is not attributable to the employee to the charge the or the suspected during the pendency of inquiry proceeding, if an employee is found suitable for promotion, then consideration of promotion is deferred, rejected, sealed, and all developed. Then sealed and correct. On noticing misconduct, what is the recourse available to disciplinary authority? Either uh, whether he can exonerate him or the, no action is permitted or to start discipline. To start disciplinary proceedings. To start disciplinary proceedings. Proceed. Okay. Then identify which of the following does not attract vigilance angle. Unusual delay in taking decision, reckless decision attributing to the financial loss to the company. Unusual delay in taking decision. First one. Fourth one, failure to submit annual property return. First one, sir, unusual delay. First one. First one, sir. Unusual. Usual delay in taking this. Mm -hmm. So we are unable to hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes, 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 now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Identify which of the following does not attract vigilance angle. Now, unusual delay in taking decision. Now, supposing if the claim is pending, even though all the requirements have been complied with by the insured, then supposing if you are taking time to settle this claim, the, there could be a complaint from the uh, insured or the client that my claim has not been getting settled because the settling authority wants some sort of a illegal gratification from me and that time you will not have any uh, any defense 
has to say that why this claim has been kept pending for so many months or days together. Same a reckless decision attributing to the financial loss. So if there is a financial loss, definitely you will be questioned. Then possession of this disproportionate asset. So possession of disproportionate asset means supposing if your income is 1 lakh rupees. Supposing your income is say 10 lakhs of rupees. Can you purchase a property worth rupees 12 lakhs in that particular year? No. No, because you will not be able to justify your decision of taking property worth rupees 12 lakhs. Against your income of 10 lakhs, uh, barring if you have taken loan, if some savings were there that you have utilized. But I am giving a hypothetical example that if your income, uh, uh, if your property income is more than your known source of income, then definitely CPA can question you. So that is also a. Uh, sir, why is, uh, sir, previous, uh, previous question. Yeah. Uh, why unusual delay in taking decision is not correct answer? Uh, I'm telling you, I have already given you an example. You now, supposing if the client has fulfilled all the requirements and that claim should have been settled within 10 days of uh, as per our tag, but it has not been settled 15 days, one month, and there, there may be a, a delay. Uh, you can say, I mean, uh, that, that was not noticed by the per person who was dealing with the claim and he, uh, that claim was unnecessarily getting pay, uh, was pending. So in that case, supposing if the claimant makes an allegation that the person who is supposed to uh, sanction the claim is asking sort of a legal, uh, illegal gratification from me and therefore he is not settling the claim, Understood? Yes, sir. Uh, if pension option is terminated, pay a way of major penalty. Which of the following is not payable? Pension. 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 Actually, I have told you pension, so depending upon the committee, if they want to release pension on compassionate ground, that can be paid to. But the answer uh, that even he is not entitled to get the pension, that is also the correct answer. But in uh, examination, when such question is asked, you have to just say about gratuity. Gratuity is also paid if that person approaches the court. Sir, uh, one thing. Uh, yes, this statement. Yes, sir. Uh, Sir, uh, what is the meaning of the stage in the time scale? What is time scale? Lower stage in the time scale? I will discuss it. Let us close this first. Yeah. I actually I had already. Okay, oh, I will explain it now. What your question is that the what is lower lower stage or lower lower pay scale? Time scale. Time scale. Time scale. See, the, we have got time scale for our, our class one, uh, class one, class two, uh, scale one, scale two, scale three, scale four. Now, assuming uh -huh. a person has been demoted from scale four to scale three, so whether he will uh, he will be entitled to get the salary which is applicable to scale four? No. no. So he will be brought on in the time scale of scale three. Okay. Understood? Okay. Yes. Now, which of the following misconduct won't attract vigilance angle? Misappropriation. Four. Fourth one. Okay. <laughs> Who can act as defense assistant in an inquiry proceeding? Only assistant, only senior assistant, employees or retired? Employees. 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 Correct. What will the fate of the inquiry proceeding if the employee dies after issue of charge sheet, after completion of inquiry, after submission of inquiry, after passing of office order but before it is uh, it's received by him before it is received by him. so this is not a question i am explaining it to you now an employee dies after the charge sheet has been issued so what will the fate of the inquiry proceed see he is not getting an opportunity to defend himself therefore so it will be discharged. The inquiry, inquiry will be quashed after completion 
inquiry inquiry is completed but Again, inquiry, inquiry report has will not be submitted so it will be caused after submission of inquiry report inquiry report has been submitted but it has not been provided to him as per principle of natural justice he should know the contents of the inquiry report then only he can make representation against the finding of the inquiry report. so after submission is given to the discipline the authority not to him so therefore the inquiry will be quashed now passing of office order but before it's received by him i have already told you supposing if the penalty order has been imposed by the disciplinary authority who sits at uh, pune aro who sits at aro and subsequently it is sent to the disciplinary uh, sent to the office in which this employee is working and before it is actually received by him He expired. Then also the inquiry will be quashed. Quashed. Yeah. Quashed. Now disciplinary proceeding can be initiated against him. Four years. Person. Four years. That is four years. Major penalty penalty can be imposed on an employee against whom major penalty charge sheet is issued. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Minor penalty can be issued on an employee against whom minor penalty charge is issued. Yes. 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 Minor penalty penalty can be issued on an employee against whom major penalty charge is issued. No. Yes. Why? Yes. yes. No. No. The major penalty yes. charge has been issued, and subsequently yes. on finding yes. that his role is not that uh, instrumental in either settlement of a fraudulent claim or mis misappropriation, then the management can decide to impose a minor penalty. But yes. the other way, whether major penalty can be issued for minor penalty? No. 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 Why? Because he is not getting an opportunity to present himself before an independently appointed inquiry officer. That means. That means what? Arey Stella, you are also there. No. Oh, sir! I was thinking like whether you recognize me. <laughs> Why not? I recognize your name. <laughs> and I, I was looking at your face, and I'm thinking, yes, he's. Uh, I was trying to uh, think that I will call up Prati and ask whether he's the I same know. shape. <laughs> okay, okay. okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Continue, sir. Ah, yeah. The authority for future of gratuity. Lies with the 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 authority for future for future of gratuity is with uh, appointing authority. In GMP appointing uh, authority. CMD. CBO. CMD. Oh. CMD not CBO. See CBO doesn't play any part in either releasing your terminal dues or all except giving an NOC. Okay, the standard of proof required in a department inquiry is that of proof beyond reasonable doubt, preponderance of probabilities. It depends on the discretion of the inquiry officer. I have already explained it. Preponderance of probabilities. What was the answer? Preponderance of probability. What was the answer of earlier? Probability. Ah, terminal dues which cannot be attached by even an order of court is what? P F. P F. P F. And leave and cash me. Even cash. Uh, Only authorized one part of the SLI. Now, under Prevention of Corruption Act, a government servant can be prosecuted for wrongful gain, misappropriation, wrong. All of the above. No, all of the above. Now, what procedure is followed in acquiring yeah. office premises as per CVC guidelines? Advertisement in newspaper, placing the advertisement in company's yeah. website, putting the advertisement on notice. All the above. All of the above. Why all of the above? Because wider publicity is given. Now, which which is correct sequence as per CDA rule? Investigation, charge sheet, in domestic inquiry and order, or investigation, domestic order, charge sheet and order, or domestic inquiry, charge sheet, investigation and order. See first, what will be what is required to be done is investigation. Then, based on investigation, charge sheet will be. Then, based on charge sheet, inquiry will be uh, completed, and based on the inquiry report, the final order will. The first uh, first sequence is correct. Now, as per CDO rules, who can be appointed as inquiry officer? Public servant, only central government officer, or officer of the company, or retired officer of the company. retired officers of the retired. Yes, public and, servant. Public servant. Public, yes, see, public servant is a general term. 
say there, there even a class three employee will be called a public servant. And supposing if the uh, for inquiry purpose, we need to appoint the officers. So officers here are officers of the company. of the company and three and four. A retired so. officer of the company. Okay, yeah. this time. Which of the following is not major penalty? Termination of service, withholding of income and permanently withholding of income. Third. Third one. Third, Third. one. Third. Why? I have given you a uh, reason. Timeline is three years. Uh, because this is a temporary, this is having a temporary effect. Temporary effect. Who can act as defense assistant, employee of the company, retired employee of the company, legal practitioner, employee of other POC general insurance company? Employee of the company. Only employees of the company. Section 16A deals with annual employee report, annual premium statement, annual property return. Annual property return. Correct. Now, which is correct sequence? First order of appellate authority, then the disciplinary authority, first order of disciplinary authority, then appellate, then memorial, then first memorial. Second one. Second. Pardon? Second, 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 second one. The first will go to lower court, that is disciplinary authority, then will go to higher court, that is appellate authority, then will go to Supreme memory. Court, that is memory. Memory. Person has been detained in police judicial custody exceeding 48 hours. He is deemed to have been suspended from the services. If no bail is granted to him, he could not get bail due to intervening audit. First one. No bail is granted to him. Yes. No Two. bail is granted. Okay. Yeah. He has been, uh, see, no bail is granted. <laughs> okay. So he is deemed to have been placed under the suspension. Sorry. Suspension can be revoked by disciplinary authority, appellate authority, CMD, the authority who has placed fourth. the said employee. Fourth one. Uh, fourth yes. one. The authority has placed the said employee under yes. suspension. And, and, and an inquiry should be ideally completed within a period of three months or nine six months, months or one year or six. Six, 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 six months. months. And appellate authority can enhance the penalty, reduce the penalty, exhaust all, all, all of the above. All of the above. Which of the following action won't be called a misconduct? Hello. Occasional late attendance. Occasional uh, late attendance. Late attendance. Won't be called a misconduct. That is occasional, not every day. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now, an employee can be placed under suspension uh, except in case of action is contemplated against him. He is detained in the uh, policy, police custody for more than 48 hours. Criminal cases pending against him. Unauthorized action. Unauthorized action. Why? Because one day CL, he can take, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. The person has to be placed under suspension. So the gravity of the misconduct should be so that it needs to be placed under suspension. But for unauthorized absence, see, yes. unauthorized absence, anyway, he's not going to get any salary. But you keep that person on suspension. So he will start getting the subsistence allowance. Allowance. Uh -huh. hey. so therefore, unauthorized absence, we don't place such employees on Suspension. Whether a suspended employees can engage himself in gainful employment, work in different office, be present in the office and do not be allowed to work in any office. So uh, whether he can engage himself in uh, gainful no. employment? No. 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 Fourth is the answer. Fourth. He can be present in the same office from where he was uh, suspended and can do work. He should not be allowed to work in any of any the offices. offices. So he cannot engage himself. He cannot work in different offices. He cannot present himself in our and in, the, in short, he should not be allowed to do work on uh, work in any of the offices. Which of the following is true? Disciplinary authority must give copy of inquiry report to employee. Not necessary to give copy of report. Should give copy only if the employee demands. Under no circumstances, it should be given to employee as it is a confidential. First one. First one. Authority must yeah, why? Because you yeah. have conducted an inquiry oh, against the yeah. charged employee who is an earning official and until he knows whether the allegation against him are proved or not proved. 
he cannot make uh, his representation against the findings of the inquiry officer. Therefore, giving an inquiry report to the chartered employee is a must. Okay. If two vigilance cases are going against one employee, how many penalties can be imposed upon him? Not more than one penalty, any number of penalties, separate penalties for two separate cases, none of the above. Separate penalties for two separate cases. Pardon? For two separate. separate ah, yeah, penalties because two cases two are going cases. against him. And not necessarily as the, both the cases are being looked after by one disciplinary authority and one uh, inquiry officer. So they, they will take their independent decision and the separate penalties for two separate cases okay. will be imposed on. Which of the following statement is true? Disciplinary authority himself can conduct the inquiry as inquiry officer. Inquiry can be conducted by the duly appointed officer only statement one is correct second statement very both the statements are incorrect or both the statements are correct statement only second correct. only second see, statement is correct only and what about first see if you look at the uh, appointment uh, the order of the appointment of any inquiry officer you will find that there is one word that the disciplinary authority is allowing or is passing on his authority to the uh, newly appointed inquiry officer. So that means both the answers are correct. Even disciplinary authority can, can conduct up. the inquiry and he can uh, pass on that responsibility to another, other, another inquiry officer. Now, what happens if the employee suddenly admits the chat during the course of the inquiry? Inquiry needs to be completed, inquiry comes to an end, inquiry will be done. Temporarily suspended till the advices of vigilant department issued. I want to seek advices of the uh, disciplinary authority. Inquiry comes to an end. Uh, inquiry comes to an end. Yes. See, the, the thing is that the, the moment he admits the charges, there is no need to prove anything. And the inquiry officer, uh, sorry, and the disciplinary authority is already already his powers to you to work as an uh, inquiry officer. So, the inquiry will come to an end. Okay. Reference is made to CVC before initiating disciplinary action against officers of scale 5, five and above. Scale 5 and above. Fourth option. Which one? Fourth. Fourth. Means chief manager and above. Yeah. Fourth. You can see the slide. Yes, sir. Are you able to see the slide? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. An appellate authority can enhance the penalty, reduce the penalty, exonerate the, the employee. All, all, all of the above. All of the above. Okay. In domestic inquiry, which of the following is not correct? He cannot defend his own case. He can be assisted by defense assistant from the same region. He may engage a legal practitioner. He can engage an employee from other RO as his assistant. Second one, he can be assisted by defense assistant from the same region. Which of the following? Three, three. 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 Going against the higher management, that is uh, chief manager, DGM, uh, GM, and CMD. Also, in in that case, there won't be any person available in our organization to look after that case as an in the role of a inquiry officer. So that time, the management can hire the services of the commissioner for department inquiry through the interference of CVC because this is an uh, additional wing of the CVC. So there, this is CDI, Commissioner for Department Inquiry. That uh, that designation itself uh, suggests that they are meant to be appointed to look into the charges as an, an inquiry officer. Oh. Any question up till now? No, oh, sir. No, sir. And uh, the other person was asking me about that... Uh, Wow, uh, in, uh, effect of dec decrease in increment and all. I will explain. 
that is in different uh, different slide i'll just hope i'll take some 5 minutes time to open that slide given yeah. sir one question sir uh, yeah. hello ha uh, sir my my uh, my network was gone at that time uh, who Haan. is authorized to forfeit the gratuity cmd 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 okay okay ye ye ban gaya ban gaya इफेक्ट कब आएगा टाइप का मी सकाळीच बघितलं पेनल्टीज का पेनल्टी खाली जाऊ दे नाही नाही खाली एक 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 आहे रे माझं ते सग पण होता एनिवे चल मी त्या हॅलो कॅन यू हिअर मी कॅन यू हिअर मी सो ऍक्च्युली ना दॅट स्लाइड आय मीन वी आर वी आर नॉट एबल टू लोकेट दॅट स्लाइड बिकॉज आय हॅव एन नंबर ऑफ प्रेझेंटेशन बट एनी वे आय कॅन एक्सप्लेन इट यू वॉट इज युअर क्वेश्चन अबाउट दॅट डिक्रीमेंट ऑर विथहोल्डिंग ऑफ इन्क्रीमेंट हॅलो 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 कॅन यू हिअर मी अरे आवाज हा सो यू कॅन आस मी क्वेरी द पर्सन वॉज इंटरेस्टेड इन हॅव्हिंग सम सॉर्ट ऑफ अ क्लॅरिफिकेशन ऑन दॅट इश्यू ना आस हिम टू यू कॅन आस मी सर द पर्सन हुट गिवन डन मिस अप्रोप्रिएशन अँड डिक्रीमेंट हा डिक्रीमेंट हा सो यू कॅन टेक डाऊन ऑन पेपर अँड राईट डाऊन ऑन दॅट अज्युमिंग हिज बेसिक सॅलरी इज टेन थाउजंड रुपीज राईट नाव येस ओके वी आर इम्पोजिंग अ पेनल्टी ऑफ रिडक्शन इन इज बेसिक सॅलरी बाय वन थाउजंड अँड वी अज्युम दॅट इज इन्क्रिमेंट इज ऑफ नाईन इन्क्रिमेंट इज ऑफ वन थाउजंड रुपीज सो हाऊ मच विल बी इज बेसिक Huh. how much 9, will be his basic 9000 that will be 9000 okay now supposing if his increment is due in the month of uh, now this penalty we are imposing in november 2020 and his increment is due in month of august 23 august 23 so what will be his uh, basic in 2000 uh, in 23 10000 what will be his basic ha uh, it will be 10000 penalty was not imposed on him what would have been his basic 
So, so on in 24 also, he will go to 11,000, whereas his basic would have been 12,000. So, you'll find that this penalty has got a permanent effect and he will be continue to be getting basic salary, which he would have been entitled to get. But for this penalty, it will be one of the rupees always less. Now, you understood? Yes, sir. This is major penalty. Yes. What about others? Other question? Now, we will talk about withholding. Now, 10,000 rupees is basic. His uh, next annual, in, in, uh, annual grade increment has to be withheld for a period of one year. So, when uh, his next increment, he will be due for next increment. I have said August 23. So, August 23, how much will be his basic? He will be not getting any increment. Any increment. Okay. Ah, because his uh, increment is withheld for a period of withheld for a period of one year. But when we go to 24, 2024, in August 24, he will get one increment that is regular increment, 1000. So his basic will be 11,000 rupees. Plus this increment, which we have deprived him by, by virtue of this increment, will get re and he will be getting 12,000 rupees. Now you will uh, you will be interested in knowing that what is the effect of the penalty. The, penal the effect of the penalty is that the, from August 23, though he was supposed to get 11,000 rupees as his basic salary, but because of this order, he was retained at 10,000 rupees for one year. So one year he did not get 1,000 rupees basic salary extra than the uh, uh, extra basic. You understood now? Yes, sir. Oh. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes. Any other yes, question? Sir. No, sir. Any other question? No, sir. <laughs> no? No. Uh, so, with this, I am ending my uh, session, but I would like to ask you, can you how my session? Hello? Fantastic. How was my session? Very, Very nice, good. sir. Because it was a lot of interactive because I wanted you to learn something and I should also know whether you are understanding or not. So there were a lot of inter interaction. I don't know. I mean, who all were raising the queries and we were asking the questions. But I mean, uh, not a single uh, explanation what I have given to you was uh, remained, I mean, uh, without any query. Uh, sir, one request. Oh, one request. Yeah. Can you please yeah, yeah, tell that, me. Can you please post that two slides on the telegram of uh, the fixation because uh, yes, yes, yes. this has already been told to our uh, organizer because last time what happened I got some 10-15 calls subsequent to my lecture setting that uh, the presentation what I have shared with these people they have submitted they have shared in a PDF format where they were not able to read the answer answer. So this time they are taking yeah, care of it. Yeah. yeah. About the fixation, I need that because uh, I did not get the clarity what you interpreted on the screen because somewhere the name. Acha, you, are, you can give. Uh, what's your name, sir? Sir Girish Kumar. Uh, so what I will see, I am just sharing my email ID with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or otherwise, you can WhatsApp uh, your your email ID to me on my number. Yeah. yeah. Nine double eight. Nine double eight. Yes, sir. Surely I shall share. Yes, repeat, repeat it. Nine repeat double eight. Number. Nine double eight. One four zero eight two nine five. Ah, yeah. Definitely, you send me your email ID on this. I will share yeah. that uh, presentation of mine. It is already oh. one thirty, and you people are. I mean habitual in having your lunch during this period. So I have uh, adhered to the time schedule given by me, given to me by these people. So thank you all very much and all, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you uh, sir. Stella, how thank are you? you? I'm good, sir. So you are in uh, reinsurance department, I believe. No, sir. I'm in foreign accounts. Foreign accounts? Actually. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, earlier you were in reinsurance or what? No, I was, uh, you know, uh, I had gone to uh, 
uh, which uh, I went to Virat branch, and then ah, I went no, no, that to, was long back. That was long back. That time yeah, even then, I was in then survey. I was I was uh, in uh, Wapi for on TMP. Wapi also, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think After you and uh, Rati were both together. Yeah, huh? yeah, she, uh, she has resigned or what? She opted for Rati, VRS. Uh, Rati took VRS in uh, 2020, sir. In 2020, so before COVID, yeah, before COVID, okay. she took uh, for this okay. uh, VRS, and then now mm -hmm. uh, I am now I came back from Wapi in 2009, and now I'm in Foreign Accounts uh, in head office. So Achha. you are to me. Then we met now after you see when I was in head office that time we met when you came back from Wapi, but subsequently. Okay. Uh, huh. And uh, see, your, what, uh, your voice was also so familiar. So I was thinking, Are, uh, have I forgotten <laughs> something? <laughs> no, 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 definitely. In but, fact, no, some 10 15 days back, I had a session in Sudrat Aro about okay. uh, IOPO training. So that time, these people they were taking your name, Rati's name. I told them, guys, uh, Stella is, is still with the organization, but I am not aware of uh, this one, Rati. Mm -hmm. Rati. But I, I was subsequently told that she is already resigned. Yeah, she so took the going on at your friend. Good, good, sir. Very good. So last time, uh, last time you didn't get the promotion, no, I believe. Yeah, I was in uh, contingency. Contingency, in, okay. I was in contingency. First number only, but I didn't get, sir. <laughs> but, uh, this time only, uh, just a couple of months back. Yeah, ah, right. In July, sir. In so July. this is scale five, na? Scale five. Okay, no I problem. Know. You become uh, scale five, then I would like to have a coffee with you in your cabin. Oh my God, <laughs> you're always welcome, sir. But you know, yeah. no, sir, I'm I'm retiring within one and a half years. So let, let it be now. One and a half uh, year is too a big period what to visit you Mumbai. You are where now in Pune? Ha ha. Acha. You are in Pune, sir? Ah yeah, I'm in Pune. Okay, I'm born and when, brought up in Pune only. When you went to Pune, you were last where, sir? When we uh, I was in Pune only. I was in Pune only. only. Okay, okay. Yeah, I came from Pune and I came back from uh, Mumbai to Pune. So how okay. are things are going on? Good, good sir. Huh? Good, good, yeah. good. So sir, we if there's any, to get enough. If there's any but, doubt, I will uh, put up a WhatsApp message yes, to you. Definitely. Okay. See, when I'll be uh, sharing this presentation, uh, there you will find my number as well as my uh, email ID also. You can okay, definitely okay, get okay. Okay. Okay, so thank you. Okay. So, what is your grade now? I am re retired. Oh, my. Oh, my. That, That's is why why I keep on, that is why I keep on. See, I am a faculty with uh, NI. Okay. Then okay. Uh, I go to uh, Insurance Institute of India also. Then okay. I'm called by United India also, Learning okay. Center at Chennai. Then I am a faculty. Uh, I'm I'm uh, totally busy now. So that's uh when you retired, sir. Both are okay. When I'll come to you, I'll meet you personally. Okay. okay. So Chalo, head, office, head office, I, I'm on the head floor only. Definitely. definitely. Please come over, sir. You're most welcome. Yeah. Okay, Thank sir. You. Thank you. Hello. Bye, sir. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye.